Good morning and welcome to season two of The Review, the Instagram live podcast where Kanama news, culture, and stories are shared over the warmth of coffee. My name is Adam and I'm your host and today I am beyond stoked, like very, very excited, super excited to bring to you my good friend, fellow Canadian, Kendama Wizard, who hasn't played with very many people in person, who actually played Kendama by himself for nearly 10 years to the review, Max Angel, newest Terra Flow member. I am incredibly excited to have Max on here. Max is one of my closest friends in the Kendama community. He is a humble player from Canada who played in isolation for nearly 10 years without playing with anyone aside from his brother and has now earned himself a spot, a coveted spot, amongst one of the greatest Kanama companies in the world right now, Terra Kanama. They are an old and renowned company uh, known for having some of the top tier players in the world. So we're super excited to have Max on here. We're going to be journeying through his story of how he was able to play for 10 years by himself, which is absolutely bonkers to me because when we talk to people on this show regularly every week, more and more and more, I realize how non-individual Kanama is. The fact that, you know, it's an individual game or an individual toy that we play with blows my mind that someone like Max was able to play for 10 years by himself without having a community around him to push him. Because I know for me, that would have been insanely difficult. I'm thankful for my friends and my community around me that pushed me to being the Kendama player that I am today. And so we're going to dive into that story. We're going to dive into his sponsorship grind. This guy put on in the last couple of years, grinding for a coveted spot amongst many teams. And we're going to be talking about his story there and how he finally earned himself a spot with Tarek and Nama. And then lastly, we're going to be talking a little bit behind the scenes into Max Angel's life and his educational and aspirational dreams. Because if you didn't know this, the guy is brilliant. The guy is so smart. And we're going to be diving into school, education, and how he balances his life and the drastic decision he made this year to move out to Vancouver and work for Tara Kendama. So without further ado, we will be jumping in in a couple minutes here, but like always, I want to know from you guys down in the chat, what are you drinking this morning? Myself, I'm drinking a South American roast. I actually can't remember which country from Rosso. They're a local roastery here in Calgary, one of my favorites. Uh, I have a lot of favorites. You guys know this, but I am drinking some Rosso this morning in my cup. As you guys let me know what you're drinking, I want to give you guys a couple quick announcements, some shout outs to some of the community members in Kendama as well. So let me say a huge congratulations to all of you who competed in the Sweets Kendama's Pro Invitational Open Division, and congratulations specifically to Zach Gallagher for taking home the dub. Uh, we're going to have Zach on the review next week, uh, actually, so that's going to be exciting to talk about his win at SKO this recent one. Uh, in addition, okay, guys, crazy update for those of you tuning in, those on the Patreon, those everywhere. Guys, this is episode 40, 40 of the review. We, we're at 40 episodes, 40 weeks of doing these conversations every weekend. We've only missed one weekend in this entire 40 weeks. That's insane. We're getting so close to doing a year full of review where we host these conversations over the warmth of coffee that draw us deeper and deeper into this community we all love and enjoy. Uh, I did some math the other day. Uh, the Patreon already knows this. I, I was talking to them about this on my close friend's story. Uh, you can also subscribe to be a Patreon. Uh, link in bio if you want info on that. But uh, I, was, I was breaking down some of the math. 40 episodes. We have a watch on about 70% of people who go from the beginning to the end of the episode uh, and, and watch the whole thing, you know, with a little bit of trickle off throughout the, the episode, which is actually like insanely high. Uh, comparatively. So you guys, thank you, first off, that you guys take that time out of your day to watch these. This is incredible. But I did the, I did the math, and collectively, there have been over 8,706 hours of time played on the podcast when you accumulate everything from the podcast, from the IG Lives, to the IG TVs. It's actually quite a lot more than 8,706 hours, but if you want to know what that actually equals out to in days, that's over 365 days worth of hours or time played of this podcast that absolutely is mind melting and so crazy that over a year's worth of content has been consumed in terms of minutes and hours over 365 24 hour days of content that's insane <laughs> so let me say a huge thank you to you guys uh, it has been a humbling journey uh, we're 40 episodes deep and we are not even half the way through this thing's going the long way we're going for the long perpetual ride 
Uh, the last thing I wanted to say is we will be bringing you back Sunday morning coffee chat soon. Uh, I'm going to do some tutorials on Chemex, Mocha Pot, and Espresso. And if you guys have been following my stories this past week, we're going to be diving into Espresso and Tonic, one of my favorite drinks. I know I got a lot of hate for that one, but trust me, guys, it's so good. Go to your local you know, third wave artisan cafe. Go order one for yourself and just enjoy it. It is a beautiful summary drink, and I think you're all going to like it. Without further ado, though, let me just read off a couple of what you guys are drinking this morning, and then we will get Max on here and dive into this week's brew view. I see Dpats underscore 48 is drinking sand this morning. Uh, Sam Doc Kramer with his Black Rifle coffee. We got Peaches and Kareem with his iced tea as per usual, obviously, he says. Uh, Sam Dot, uh, he's, he's shouting out that Black Rifle coffee espresso. It's hot. It's fire, he says. Uh, we're going to have to give that a go sometime here on the show. I am actually looking for a potential coffee sponsor. I've reached out to one company that I really like, but I'm going to keep it on the down low. But if we can get some coffee, we're going to try and do a giveaway for you guys from one of these roasters that I really, really like. So uh, I, will, I will get back to you guys on that soon. And we are going to dive in here. Okay, Max, we're going to get you on here and let's dive into this week's... Gosh, guys, I just love coffee so much. This is so good. Max Angel in the house. How are you? Yo, what's up, Adam? How am I looking? Am I okay for you right now? You're good. Your audio is a little choppy there, but but I can see you just good. Here, okay. I might honestly get rid of these heads. Yeah, give it a go. Uh, you can take those off and let's see if that's better. Yeah. How is, is, that, is that any better? Is that about the same? Yeah. Yeah, that's better. We'll have a little echo in the background, but you know what? That does not take away from the content of today's episode because we get the man, the myth, the max on this show today. And I am so excited. Man, man, let me tell you first off, before we jump into some questions here, I have been waiting for this episode for a while. Uh, you are one of my, my closest friends in the community. I really appreciate the work that you've done. Uh, you, I don't think anyone could ever find anything wrong with you. You are just a very well-loved and well-received person in general. Who, who grinds, right? You put on for the game that we all love. And so let me say... <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, I know. We've had some good games in the past, for sure. You're definitely one of the one of the first people that I started talking to when I got back into it. So, I don't know. I've been excited for this episode, too. I think it'll right be a on. good one. I'm definitely down to... I don't really have much... Yo, what's up? I don't really have many opportunities to kind of nerd out. Well, so, consider, consider this your opportunity. Man, uh, Sorry, I should have organized this before I got on the podcast. But um, hey, it is it is okay. We aren't even sweating over here. We're just we letting go. you get. There we go. We got good audio now. Perfect. Okay, sick. So, so Max, we're we're gonna dive into your story today. Uh, I know a little bit of it, and you actually wrote uh, a fair amount of it on on the Cafe Kanama blog. Uh, so for those yeah. of you guys that haven't read that already you can also catch some of the behind the scenes and we'll try and go even deeper than what was in there but you can catch the the big overarching story of max angel and his journey of playing kandama by himself for like 10 years uh on yeah. the blog you can click my link in bio i don't know if you still have it in your link in bio but it's a really good my, story yeah. one of the most read blogs on actually the most read blog on the website i think so crazy oh, yeah. yeah there's uh there's a lot of good stuff in there i left out a lot though so yeah so absolutely dive in so before we dive in though there was a cool event that happened this weekend you were competing in in the sweets kandamas pro invitational which is exciting and and you got that invite in part due to a recent event in your life you are now <laughs> the newest member of the Terra kandama flow team how's that feel yeah no it feels great man it's like honestly a dream come true i mean i remember entering like the Terra one year competition and Terra two year <laughs> in like 2012 and 2013 and like I remember, like nine you know, years ago. Yeah, like, yeah, like nine years ago. It was so funny, actually, when Smith, like, when Alex Smith first was going to send me out a package, he was like, oh, yeah, what's your address? I found this, like, address in our, like, email from eight years ago. Is that still your address? I was like, yeah, that's still my parents' place. You can send it there. He <laughs> <laughs> says it there, like, before. <laughs> it was just so funny. Um, but, yeah, so pretty much a dream come true. I honestly, like, I was kind of grinding, like, grain theory for a bit. I wasn't. I hadn't even really played like a modern Terra shape. Um, and then, and then I got out here and like just started hanging with them. And, and, yeah. uh, well, I was like, yo, why aren't I going for Terra, man? Like what's going on? And then, yeah, Smith asked me, I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. 
it, it makes sense, you know, and we'll, we'll dive a lot more into that story in a little bit, but, but it, it totally makes sense. I know I like you and I've been good friends. We've talked about this like a lot, even when you were grinding for grand theory and other companies and all this. And, and then when, yeah. when I found out that you were going for, for Terra, I was like, that makes so much sense. Like <laughs> yeah. you, you fit the Terra vibe, you're Canadian, you have a, a play style that meshes so well with that crew and the, the technicality of the, of the tricks that you do, which a, for those of you listening, those of you tuning in that don't know Max Angel, uh, go follow him. Kendama Max, is it dot angel or is it Kendama yeah. Max Kendama underscore Max dot angel? Yeah. Yeah. Dot angel. Go, go give him a follow and go check out some of his tricks. One of my favorite tricks of the past year that you put out was a deconstructed inward lunar tray uh, but oh, with yeah. like toss back. So you did like inward lunar flip, catch, toss back to inward lunar, then barrel, barrel toss back, and then the tray, tray toss back. It yeah, was that was a good one. I love that one. That was a For wild sure. trick. So <laughs> cool. So. Um, but, but truly, uh, I think it's a great fit. We are so excited for you, rooting for you. And honestly, like today I was, I was looking around because I usually, every episode, I try to like rep a Kanama from the brand of whoever I have on the mm -hmm. show is and and I've actually given away my last uh, Terra to my coworker. So I had an LBB with a, a Kush Tama. This is a, like an old LBB Kush Tama. Those things are legendary. With a great right? Tama. Yeah. So my my colleague is borrowing it right now, uh, and he's been seshing it. But then I realized I don't actually have any other Terra Kanamas here. So I need to scoop one soon. Those Chris Goon mods look right. insane. The GFN shape is wild. Yeah, big time, man. We got some cool stuff coming soon, hopefully, too. So I know. I'm trying to decide, do I hold out or do I, do I calm down? Well, we can dive into that. Uh, we can share all about the, the Terra stuff in a little bit. But let's, let's jump into uh, an introductory couple questions here that we always like to ask on the show. I always want to know, first off, what are you drinking this morning? Or after, it's um, the morning for you, right? You're a yeah, Pacific Standard Day. Yeah, it's the morning. Um, yeah, I just woke up. Um, I don't drink way too much coffee. I got a cup of coffee. Uh, I got just like drip. I think it's like Nabob or Nabob that my roommate Classic. made. Classic. And then I've been on the lemon water recently. One of my roommates like bought like a bunch of lemons and then we kind of had to yeah. go through them. So I kind of just started doing it and then I've kind of gotten hooked on lemon water. In the morning. You know, so you know what? I, I made some lemonade yesterday from like a, a lemon, lemon juice concentrate. It was like two days ago. It actually turned yeah. out pretty good. I'm I'm oh, yeah. I'm a fan of like summary drinks like that. They're they're pretty good. I think people think that I only drink coffee. <laughs> I definitely give off that vibe, but you know, I, I try to drink water every now and then and I and I mix it up <laughs> with some other stuff here and there. So drinking some coffee, some nabob and some lemon water. That sounds mm. pretty good. That sounds like a refreshing morning. Mm. Uh, cool. Uh what if if you could teach any one person their first spike, either past or present, who would it be? Doesn't have to be a Kandama player. It could be though. You could like claim the title of being the one who taught Bonzatron his first spike or whatever. But if you could go back in time and teach anyone or today, who would it be? Mm. It's like, yeah, I've been thinking about this question, and I feel like I would have said like Jacob Acrobat, but then Lucas Adverse sent him a Kandama. So was it Lucas who sent first... him that Kandama? Yeah, Lucas sent him one. Oh my gosh, um, guys. Well, we need to take a quick moment for a round of applause to Lucas Adverse for getting a Kendama in Jacob Acrobat's hands. If you guys don't know him, uh, this last week, it, I think it was this last week, he posted a reel for yeah. the first time. And this, if you guys don't know him, like um, maybe maybe do you want to give a little introduction? You're a little closer to home than I am. Uh, but Yeah, Jacob's I mean, he's a little closer to me. I don't really know him, but I don't, I don't know. You say it. He's just... <laughs> yeah, if, so, if, if you guys... Acrobat. Yeah, so, if you guys don't know him, I think he's a Cirque du Soleil performer and or something like that, where he had done Cirque du Soleil. And he does like trick shots with like, he throws knives up and catches them in between his toes and all these other like random crazy stuff with like blowing ping pong balls out of his mouth yeah, and back yeah. off. The, anyways, he does all this insane stuff. He's got an incredible Instagram account. And it's like, it was begging to have a Kendama just slide in perfect. there. Like literally he was training for Kendama all along. Dude, <laughs> With like the needle in the pee, like he literally does like a juggle knee bounce, juggle knee bounce spike, and it's like with a, a needle and pee. Yeah, it's insane. Exactly. Yeah, it was so funny. So, uh, Lucas Adverse, for those of you tuning in, just, just some recent news he sent him out a, a Kanama and he finally did some tricks with it after like years and years of people, I think, begging him to pick one up. So, yeah, for big, real. big, big news. He's a big, big account on Instagram. I think uh, it was really cool to see that. But, mm -hmm. uh, you, you would have said Jacob Acrobat, yeah, I would have said say? Jacob Acrobat, but I don't know. No, like if I had to say now, maybe I'd go back and like whoever like started Hasbro or something, some old toy mm. company, teach them so that they would like 
bring Kendama over way earlier and it could be like huge. I don't know, maybe we'd lose some of the community and stuff, but it'd be kind of cool if you could get, get it in some big names' hands in North America earlier. Yeah, that that's a tough one, hey? Like what if what if Hasbro picked it up and it just became like a a, a too normalized of a toy, you know, like where it lost yeah. its like indie grassroots culture and it just like was like big box culture, you know, like Lego yeah. or whatever. Every kid has it, but you know, like I don't know. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll get there. But I was thinking about that as some like meta answer to I don't know. That's that's a good answer. I like that one though. That poses a whole bunch of like conspiracy theories in my head. Like, what if Hasbro did that or Walmart? <laughs> okay. Uh, last question. Uh, I want to know, and and I think this is one of my favorite questions we ask every week: is who is the most inspiring player for you today? Not the one who got you into it or anything like that. Though it could be the same person, but today. Good, because I definitely have a lot of answers over the ten years, but um. I mean, I've thought about this so much, and it's still so tough to say. Like, trick-wise, like, Teo Fiorna, I get a lot of inspiration from him. He just has, like, no wasted movements. He has, like, mm. really precise. His trick construction is just, like, genuinely, like, beautiful. Um, D. Westy, like, a lot of his, like, little tech, I, like, try to steal. Um, mm -hmm. Just, uh, just a, oh, oh. What, one second. One sec. If you can avoid trying to to tap the mic a little bit there, that'll help. Fujita might, might be, might be, might be. Um, yeah. Otherwise, Soma Fujita. I get a lot of like weird tech from him for sure. Yeah. His freestyle is like so sweet to watch. He's just always having so much fun. Um, yeah. Those are some of the big players. Um, it's like oh, Sagini, Sagini. I forget his name. The Hungarian guy. Been getting a lot of inspiration from him recently too. Um, but otherwise, like, outside of tricks, um, just as, like, homies, I mean, Keegan Patey was, like, my first Kendama homie, and he really got me into the community and, like, mm. got me to get an Instagram and got me to start using hashtags and stuff. And so, like, and now watching him, like, start Citadel and, like, be, like, successful at that, that's been pretty inspiring for me big time. And, like, I just love the guy. He was, like, yeah, Saganimi. There it is. Yeah. Um, and, uh... And yeah, so he's always been, he's always just been like there and like my first Dama homie. So that's for sure. And then like, I don't know, now that I've just been like kind of in the community more and talking to more people, people like Carter Justice or like Luke, I forget his last name. I meant to look this up. Luke. Luke. I don't know. Is, he, is he on a team? No, he's not. Uh, I'm gonna, I feel like such a, his, what was his old Instagram name? Luke Kend, I think, is his, is his Instagram name oh, now. Oh, Luke, uh, Luke Lindman. Yeah, Luke, Luke Lindman, Dude, Luke Lindman, oh, yeah, yeah. His, Dude, his I old, love Luke. His, oh, like, what was his old Instagram name? It's, it's like Lind Ken now, but it used to be... Yeah. Oh, he used to have the best name ever, and yeah. I can't remember what it was, but I love that but, guy so much. But anyway, he, like, his just whole mentality and, like, how he approaches Kendama, I really relate with a lot, and... um. Yeah, he's just a really good guy, and I've had some, like, great chats with him, and he definitely, like, especially this 28 Tricks Later, like, 28 Tricks Later is one thing that obviously gets a lot of us, like, really just hits a lot of us hard mentally, and he just says, like, oh, he's just, like, I don't want to see you guys trash talking your tricks for 28, like, <laughs> he's just, like, such a sweet guy, and yeah, like, I don't know, homies that I met, I could go on, but, so, oh, yeah. So, long story short, you got a, you got a lot of long inspiration short, today. I got, I got, <laughs> <laughs> Those are pretty, pretty droning on bad answer. But, oh yeah, <laughs> there, there's some good ones. And yeah, shout out to Keegan Patey. Uh, I think uh, he stands out as probably one person yeah. in your life that was probably really influential, at least from my yeah. chats with you. Uh, sure. he, owner of Citadel Kanama, a newer Canadian brand. Uh, lots of love goes out to Citadel. They're doing some really cool stuff over there. So go peep them. Uh, we we really like Citadel over here. Um, Big okay. Max, uh, we're going to dive in here in a, in a hot second. I want to remind uh, the people in the chat that if you want to participate in today's episode, there's a couple ways to do that every week. One, if you're a Patreon, you can always submit early questions through the Patreon or through the Close Friends story. And those are priority questions every week. Uh, on top of that, though, you can also put your questions on the post. It's great for boosting engagement on Cafe and Nama, but on top of that, it also gives you priority <laughs> questions as well. And then last but not least, if you've missed both of those opportunities and you still want to get your questions in and have your name shouted out or your questions asked, uh, drop them in the Q&A tool at the bottom and we will do our best to answer as many as we can, though we miss many every week because there's so many. So put them in the Q&A tool and we will do our best to hit them today. 
But Max, uh, without further ado, are you ready to dive in? Yeah, let's do it. Dude, I'm so ready. I know yeah, a bit dude. of your story, but I want to I want to go a little bit deeper today and dive sure. into it and kind of journey through just, it. And, and yeah, man, just, it, honestly, just stop me if I start rambling because I feel <laughs> like I start really. No, rambling. the rambles are where the good stuff lives. I love it. Sure. Uh, okay, so Max, let let's take it back in time though. I I like I like this question. I like bringing it really far back uh, as much as we can where it's still relevant by asking the question like, what was your life like before Kanama? Where were you? What were you doing? Um, I mean, I don't know. I was like 11. <laughs> I, was, uh, <laughs> I, was just, I was just chilling. Like, man, tough to say. I don't know. I was just like some, you know, kid in Ontario playing hockey, going to school, playing on the outdoor ranks. Just like, um, yeah, man, honestly, like, I don't know. <laughs> I, okay, that was been a part of it so long. Like, I was just like a regular, like, little, like, tween, not even tween. Just, just I didn't really. L- I, I will say, like, I did definitely, I had, like, one or two little skill tro- skill toys that I tried. Like, I think before even Kendama, I did, like, Diablo for a bit and kind of got into those, like, a little bit, but, like, nothing comparable as a hobby. Mm. So you were, you were, like, 11 years old when you found Kendama. What, and, and you have, and I know, like, I should ask these questions, but I know the answer. So it always feels weird to, like, ask yeah. a question you already know the answer to, but... But you, you have a brother. Uh, do you have other siblings as well? Uh, what, what's family yeah. like for you? So I was actually, I think I was, I think I was 12 when I found Kanawa. Could have been, I think it was 12. But um, yeah, I have two older brothers. Um, yeah, and uh, they're chilling. They played, one, my, my, I have an older brother, Sam, and an older, oldest brother, Ben. And Sam, Sam played Kandama too for a while. Um, sorry, what was the question? uh yeah what was family like for you like what what was the family situation at that time you were like 11 years old just yeah, trying to get a old. picture of who max angel was before kanama you know <laughs> well, yeah so it was, it was good man we were, we were chilling like i was always good friends with my brothers like we never really like fought that much or anything so it was always it was always a good place at home and yeah my i guess my mom would have been yeah both my parents were working back then and uh yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was, it was it was good times. Like, and this is Ontario, right? Yeah, this is in Ottawa, Ontario. I lived in like right, right in like center town, Ottawa. So yeah. big like Ottawa. government town. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Ottawa is fairly bilingual, right? Like mm-hmm, French yeah. and, and English. Are you bilingual? Yeah. So my French is pretty bad now. I did like until grade ten or eleven, all of my classes other than like English class. And maybe gym were in French. So I was in like mm. full French. And even like right until the end of high school, I was still taking French. So there was a time when my French was like really good and I was like essentially bilingual, but it's definitely faded a lot. I can like get back into it if I'm like in a French speaking area for a while, but my under- I can understand it pretty well, but like speaking has really gotten so bad. Yeah. And so, so you pretty much fully grew up in Ottawa, Ontario, and lived there for most of your life. But now you're in Vancouver. You're working for Tara Kandama uh, mm-hmm. out there. And you had you lived anywhere else previous to either of those spots? Were you anywhere else in the world? Um, I did, like, I did an exchange in, like, Germany. I was there for, like, six months. But otherwise, um, no, I just was in Ottawa, born and raised, right on the border. Hey, right on. So, wait, wait. wait. So wait, wait, wait. So, hey, that's a lie. I lived in Halifax for five years. Oh, did you actually? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, like, the... Totally tries to block that out of his life. He's like, no, Halifax, no, didn't live there. What? That's so funny. Actually, Tanner's in the chat. He lives there with me. But uh, yeah, I, I was in Halifax. I went to Dow uh, and did my undergrad there. And then oh, okay. I worked there for a year afterwards. Okay. And is that where you met Keegan as well? Because Keegan's from out in mm-hmm. that area, right? Yeah. Okay, so well... I met Keegan in Halifax. It's actually a hilarious story how Keegan and I met. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. Um, before we do, though, I want to know. Well, we'll kind of jump back around and through the timeline a little bit here. But uh, what did you go to school for at Dalhousie? I went to school for uh, like geology. It was like more broad, like earth science. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I did a lot of earth science, mostly just science stuff. I was originally planning to go for biochem, but then switched. I was like almost had a religion minor, but then it like just snuck away from me. Um, but yeah, super interesting. All in, all in geology or science stuff. So he's a, is, you're a hippie, a man of the earth. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on. I love it. I love it. And and we'll talk. I I know that you made a, a pretty drastic decision this year 
to choose to go to Vancouver instead of pursuing your master's, which I think you had planned on doing uh, mm. in Europe. And, and that was a yeah. huge move for you. I, and I haven't even talked to you much about it yet. So I want to get there because I actually sure. like have so many questions about that because that's, that's a, a pretty big decision to prioritize working for Tarek and Nama and pursuing Kanama <laughs> over pursuing your master's degree in this thing that you've been building your life up towards. And I think mm -hmm. that's mind blowing. And so that, that is like, that's, that's some gold that we're going to get to for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Definitely, man. okay, cool. This gives, this gives us a pretty good picture of kind of like who you are a little bit of, of your life, but let's, let's take it back now and let's, let's go to where you first picked up Kanama. I'm you're like 12 years old and, and how does Kanama enter your life? So I just had a family friend. Um, I think we were like at a cottage and he just had a, he had a blue TK 16 and he just like whipped it out. And um, yeah, it was just like classic, you know, first learning Kendama. They didn't really know much about it. No one really knew much about it. Um, it was like 2010. They're just like, Oh yeah, this is like ball and cup toy. Try to get it on the cup. If you spin it, it helps to get it on the spike. And then I think they gave it, I like, I played with it. I played with theirs for a bit. I think I borrowed it for like a week. And then I was immediately went on goods from Japan and ordered a blue TK for myself. And I think my brother might have gotten a black or no, my brother got a red TK. Um, and which, then which brother was was this? That was this Sam. Is, sorry, Sam. Is got Sam a, the oldest or the one closest? So it's me, he's Sam. Man, okay. Um, yeah, and he's like a pretty big part of my Kendama story as well. Um, but yeah, so then got a blue TK and the rest is history, man. I just like had it on me from then on fully. I a little bit like six months or seven or eight months later, I got like a gold sunrise. Eventually got a, my light blue Azora, which was like my prize Dama. And yeah, it was just, I was hooked. Dude, that's, that's sick. So what, what was it then in the first couple of weeks that really hooked you? Was there something about Kanama that you found to be, really gripping for you in particular that click because you you were mentioning that you were big into hockey back then playing on the odr all the time which for those of you not in canada means outdoor rink yeah true sorry <laughs> i don't know if i don't know if I don't, i'm sure everybody else knows but i just like to be pretentious <laughs> yeah. i don't even play hockey but i'm from canada so i gotta pretend like i do yeah. uh, definitely didn't spend many years on the the odr myself but a yeah. little bit here and there so you were playing yeah. hockey but what what drew what made kanama stand out to you yeah I was playing hockey, but I was also, like, I was just playing, like, house league. Like, I was just, like, messing around. I played, like, a variety of sports, just, like, never, I was never really that competitive, but just, like, you know, played for fun. But, uh, I don't know, I think it was just that, it's hard to say again, because it was, like, 10, 11 years ago, but it was, I think, really just that, that classic thing in Kendama where you just, like, there's no beating it, you know? Like, you can't beat it. You just, like, get better. And, like, there was, mm -hmm. especially in those early days when, you know, no, like, no one around me really knew it. I didn't know what it was at all. So every new thing, it was like I was inventing a new trick, you know? Like, I could do something else, and I was like, wait, like, what if you could get it on the base cup, but, like, hold it like this, and, like, all that kind of stuff, where it was just, like, discovering it, you know? I didn't have anyone showing it to me. Like, I found videos, like, a little bit later, but... What, what were some of the first videos you found? Because back then, there wouldn't have even really been any content yeah. on YouTube. It, like, Colin Sander would have just picked up Kendama at that point, like, well, a, little bit, Sander, a little bit earlier. Yeah, Colin Sander had some edits out. So I was, there was, like, a, man, when I first started playing Kendama, I would probably watch Colin Sander at Edit 7, like, at least once a day. Because um, it was just, like, mind-blowing. I remember, like, showing my grandparents Colin Sander Edit 7 in, like, 2011 or something. And Yo, Grandma, like, check this out. <laughs> Like, you got to watch this. this is Max, wow. you've showed this to me seven times today already. Yeah. Come on. Max, <laughs> you brought Kadama in for show and tell ten weeks in a row. No, but, um, <laughs> yeah, but, but, like, they were like, oh, yeah, like, you could just, like, for a few practice, you could just do that. And I was like, why? Like, how don't you think that this is crazy? Like, in what world do you not think that this is insane? So, definitely Colin Sander at seven. Colin Sander at five. Kendama had it one part two from those, like, I think it was like the Hong Kong group. Mm, uh, I've never like, heard of those. Oh, that's like, that's a while. That it, they've talked about it on Dominoes a few times and like, they've been doing taps and stuff in like 20, 2010. Um, you know, old like Akimoto videos, whatever that one of the guy in the parking lot that he has like the jumbo, that classic, I don't know what it's called. But um, yeah, those are like the videos back then. Oh, a lot of stuff from The Void. And like, I don't know if you remember the... the BKO, the British Kendama organization, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's like that guy that wrote the like click clack books. 
Yeah. BK, uh, yeah, so The Void, he had some videos that I watched, and he, like, you know, I learned, like, how to do Lunar from him, and Matt Rice had videos that I learned how to do, like, Rat Tail and stuff, so there were some videos out there. There were definitely some that I'd, but, uh, yeah. so, yeah, a lot of those. Mostly just Colin Sander edit seven, though. Yeah, my, well, there were a lot of edits I watched once, but <laughs> yeah. I watched Colin, Colin, Colin Sander edit seven at least, <laughs> at least once a day. I, once a day. I, st- like, I still watch it once a day, every every day. So I get home, roommate's like, "Please, no, not." But <laughs> you we have to. I've been no. doing this for ten years. Can't you stop now. I've had this sweet show. I've had this sweet show. I've had this sweet show. It's Colin Sanders at its <laughs> Bring brings a girl home. Uh, hey, we're gonna watch a movie tonight. Oh yeah, what that new romance movie? That's a nah. We watched Colin, Colin Sander at number seven. Yeah. We watched that last night. Nah, sorry. Yeah, it's tradition. <laughs> Uh, that's sick that's super sick so you 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 were playing uh, early on your brother picked it up too and you didn't have any other influence around you aside from these edits that got you into it and you were just kind of exploring kanama as a creative vent in your life like you were just like i don't know like sometimes okay so so i used to work at these camps all the time and i travel around uh speaking at all these camps hanging out with kids all the time and these kids have like never seen kanama before in their life right and they pick Mm -hmm. it up and and until you start doing tricks before them they don't know what to do so they just start exploring it they're like they're like playing with it trying to figure (laughs) out what they want to do with it there there's no rule set around them of what they're supposed to do until someone else shows them right uh was that what it felt like for you where you were just like organically picking it up and just going like i don't know maybe i could try this no one's telling you not to do anything yeah i mean i guess there was a degree of that i have a like super distinct memory of like having it in like Sarah grip and trying to like penguin spike it and being like, why is this so hard? And then just being like, Oh, true. Like you can just do that. Like you can just do big cup to spike like that. So I think yeah. there was definitely like a lot of stuff like that where I was just like, yeah, just like figuring it out and yeah, not really having way too much frame of reference. And like, yeah, like I said, there was like, I don't know, some tricks that just like didn't, didn't make sense like lunar was one for me that just like didn't make sense until the bko he like showed that trick where you like hook the string under there yeah for the lunar and then you can like just swing it up and i yeah yeah into lunar and um so yeah it definitely felt like just like exploring something totally new and you know like seeing that you can do airplane and then lighthouse and stuff and like Mm. Yeah, like definitely, I mean, like I said, Colin Center at 7 opened my eyes to like a lot of new tricks. And that's, yeah. but definitely like, you know, I kind of had to figure out the tech on my own. And especially back then when it was just like icy paint, small bevels, like, yeah, I was definitely just like a lot of exploring, trying new things, trying stuff that like didn't really make sense. It started, I mean, like you, like both of us, you know, did a lot of space walking at first because that was... Mm-hmm. But then, but that really was really cool. That was what was cool. Yeah. There was the was Zumadonke cool. edit and the like yeah. uh, the Flow Namic duo edits with Kenyatta and uh, and Dave. Those edits like changed my world. Those, those are what yeah, I watched dude. all the time. Yeah, dude. I probably got like a hand roll down before I got like Lighthouse or something. Yeah. Like, oh, me too. Something. Me too. Hundred percent. My very first Kanama clip is like me doing like uh, I'd have to go back and look it up, but it's on like a a Purple Heart or Wenge, like, it, but, but it was, like, definitely not high quality from Caleb Kendama. I got it for, like, eight bucks mm-hmm. on their closing out sale. It was, like, some old, old trick of me doing, like, these weird spacewalky hand roll, like, whips around my finger. I didn't have anyone to tell me I was doing it wrong. And I'd just, like, catch it a big cup, and I'd be like, what up? I didn't know that you were supposed to spike yeah. it. So, so I just, like, caught it on the cup, and I was like, yo, I did it. <laughs> so classic. So classic, like, I almost, it's, it's cool, you know, kind of seeing Kendama progress where I almost see like the way that the way that juggles are now, or maybe the way that juggles were like a couple years ago is almost how like, um, is almost how, like spacewalks were at the beginning because they were like flashy and cool. And so people wanted to learn them. And then once you learn them, they almost become a bit of like a rest or like a recovery position. So mm. like just that people can kind of like recover into juggles. Now I felt that people could kind of like recover into hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would save my lines by like adding in another hand roll yeah. and like and uh, and swirl or whatever, yeah. and you could just save a line. And that was what freestyle was all about. Is like you could miss your trick, but it wouldn't look like you missed your trick. You were just yeah. accidentally pushing it into like a leg tap, and then- <laughs> yeah. and so like at, you know at first like it was sweet because people were like, "Oh, you're doing like more hand rolls, more hand rolls," and then like just like juggles, 
and this is kind of cool where we're getting to now it gets to the point where it's like no like you should try to do like the fewest that you can because like it becomes a recovery so that's something that's kind of cool yeah so okay so you were getting into it back then with your brother and you guys started playing uh you were pushing you were watching colin colin sanders at a number seven mm -hmm. non-stop uh how did you progress throughout that season because and, and this is really what i want to kind of dive into here in a, in, a, in a minute or two but time and time again when i journey through episodes with different guests on the show almost without a, without a doubt everyone's like i wouldn't have gotten to where i am without this person or without this community or without any of these things to push me and to show me sorry your audio is totally cut out right now 10 years uh talk to me through that journey and how you were able to do that sorry your audio totally cut out until you said 10 years right there Oh, no way. I hope everyone else was able to hear me. Uh, my bad. Well, let me, let, me, let me repeat that then briefly here. Uh, how were you able to progress through a Kandama in, in the way that you were able to progress uh, with only really playing with your brother and watching edits online? You didn't really have that sense of community that so many of us do. Yeah, so I mean, I had like a couple friends like start and stop and like, you know, a lot of like, I had some friends that, you know, they would, like, skateboard, and I would go, like, skate with them, but I was never really, like, a huge skater because um, I was just a little softy. Um, and then, you know, they played with me for a bit, so I had, like, some help there, like, at the very, very beginning. And then, I mean, yeah, Sam played with me for a while, and Sam still to this day, like, he can recognize, like, cool tricks, which is sweet. But I think that partially because since it was, like, so niche back then, like, even more than it is now, and there were so few players the idea of kind of like being not like the best, but like being like a, you know, a leader in Kendama was seemed so much more attainable back then. And I think that that's, you know, what kind of drove me is that like, this is something that like not that many people do that like I can do and I love and I want to be better at. And especially back then when like the crew that was, you know, the crew that was playing Kendama, like nowadays it's, you know, you have like a lot of, you know, younger kids that are getting, like, really, really good. But back then, mm -hmm. it was, like, you know, Colin Sander, Turner Thorne, Zach Yord, you know, Haley Bischoff, Steph Lucier. It was, like, all, like, you know, late teens, early 20s, mid-20s year olds mm -hmm. that were all getting into it and that were all, you know, running the competitions, doing Dama Fest, that were posting any content. And the only real, like, people that were my age were, like, you know, William Penniman, and Jake Fisher and Brandon Meyer. And I kind of saw them as like my like internet rivals. And like, I don't know, they probably didn't even know. <laughs> who, who didn't know who at all. I remember thinking like, oh, there's these like other young guys out there that are like good at Kendama. Like I want to be like the young guy that's like really good at Kendama. So I think that like, even if it wasn't, you know, people around me that even <laughs> knew me, there was, there were definitely like people that I was like kind of subcon like, not subconsciously, like, consciously competing with. But just, like, yeah, like, wanting to be really good, man. I just wanted to be really good, and, like, I wanted to compete. I wanted to be the one, like, going to Japan and going to MKO and stuff. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So then how did also, you part? I also just it? loved it. Like, I loved playing Kandama, too. So I just did always we... wanted to be playing. <laughs> we all do. So, okay, wait. So how did you feel like you were a part of the community? Where did you run into these guys and like feel like you had this rivalship with them? I remember in, in when you wrote the blog for me, you were talking a little bit about you were uploading videos and creating these edits with your brother and, and uploading them to, it was the old Ken Garden website, right? Yeah, so well, we had like one that was shared on the Ken Garden forum, um, but I, we were uploading them. There's still, there's I still have a couple old edits on Vimeo actually. Yeah, that was back, it was like, thought that Vimeo was, was sweet because we were too cool for YouTube or whatever. Yeah, too too cool for YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I have a bunch of old edits on, on Vimeo. They're still up there if you look them up. But um, I guess like, I remember right when I started, Sweets was like just starting out. I even have like Facebook messages from like Sweets when he was like, yo, I'm starting a company. And I was like, who's this guy? Like, what's he talking about? In hindsight, brutal because like... Could have been one of the first Sweets players... <laughs> Oh, no, don't worry. I grommed out. I was hitting him up. I thought, at first, I was like, this guy's weird. And then I was like, yo, can I get a sponsorship? Man? Like, can I get a <laughs> um, <laughs> but he had, like, a few little video competitions. And so I remember entering those. And, like, William Penniman was already, like, pretty... And Brandon Meyer, were, I think, were already pretty close with, like, the Sweets crew. And, I mean, Jake Fisher was always kind of, like, this the, like young gun from Kentucky. So just, like, seeing their videos. Also entering... 
the old Kendamico amateur nights. Those are definitely like one of the, you know, best spots that I got to compete with others. Um, and like, what, what, what were those? I, I'm not super familiar. So the Kendamico amateur nights, I was looking like, they were really big in like the summer of like 2013 or 2014. And it was basically, um, it was like pros couldn't enter. It was like a competition that was just over a week and they would each have a theme. So it would be like one week was a single trick. One week was lighthouse themed. One week was string trick themed. And it would just be like, you'd have the week, you just upload, I don't know, like 30 seconds to a minute. And they just pick a winner and just give them, I don't know, some prize, some like some old Zen or something. And, and they were just like, pretty popular for non pro players. Cause it was like, you know, a weekly competition. And so I definitely saw a lot of people go through those and like Caleb Jeffries, I remember entering those and yeah, I saw a lot of guys in there and I remember like the lunar one. I remember Jake Fisher beating me or think or something like that. I remember just being like, so pissed me like, God, I need to be Jake Fisher. <laughs> but, uh, and eventually him becoming like way, way better anyway. <laughs> so whatever. But um, so yeah, the amateur nights and I mean, um, the terror, the terror competitions, like I always loved, like I looked forward to those for sure. I didn't enter like way too many, like I never entered the grip competitions or anything, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's where I saw people. And like, I mean, the terror competition is where I kind of got noticed and where I got my original sponsorship. But yeah, in terms of like actually kind of seeing people, it was just like FKC, like Facebook Kandama community, YouTube videos. Um, I was never like way too engaged. Like I didn't really like chat with anyone like I would now, but. I, I feel like I was, like, aware of most people. I, like, saw them. They didn't see me, probably, but... <laughs> hey, now they do, right? It's all about today. <laughs> it was all building up to this moment here um, today. They're going to see you now, Max. They're going to see true. you now. That's super cool. So you were, you were, like, almost, like, pseudo a part of this grander community. And I don't know if you felt like I did, but being a Canadian, there isn't, like, Canada's weird, man, for Kanama, because we're all so spread out. Like, there may be a lot of players in Canada that play, but we're all, like, hours and hours and hours apart from each other. There's not, like, a, mm -hmm. a central hub that we can just gather in. Uh, we're so spread out. And, and I always felt, like, for the first couple of years, there were maybe, like, two people in my community that played, and and I just, like, would watch these videos of, like, the Kanama USA team going on tour to schools or the Sweets team doing that or any other team doing these things. I was like, man, I just wish that something like that would come rolling through my town. I wish yeah. that I could be a part of the that. Ken, man, the Roots tour. Of yeah, all I felt stuff. so Ooh. left out of the Kanama community yeah. being in Canada because we don't get that. Even in Europe, I'd like, I saw it in, in like, what, what is it? Is it Taiwan or Thailand that uh, Serial Kanama is based out of? Or like when they go to Hawaii or like travel overseas, yeah. like, please come to my city. Come <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah, I think they're out of Singapore. But yeah, I know, I feel Singapore. that, man, for sure. Yeah, so, oh man, you're just reminding me of so many other answers I have for earlier questions. Go on, though, go on, sorry, go on. <laughs> so I, I was just so curious, many edits. like, did you, did you feel that same kind of left out nature that I felt throughout that time? And how did you bear with that? Like not having other people, because I think I remember reading like your brother kind of faded out of Kanama, but you stuck with mm -hmm. it throughout that time. Yeah. And then you were really like, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm like projecting a bit, but did you feel quite alone during that season of playing or were you just still stoked all the time? Yeah. I mean, I definitely did feel pretty isolated. Um, and this is something that I can touch more on later, but I also like, it's tough being isolated like that because especially when I was entering competitions and like first kind of started getting, you know, when I got sponsored originally, because I never really knew like actually how good I was compared to anyone else. Cause I'd never really played with anyone in person. So I'd see videos and like, even now, like you see Instagram videos, but even now, like I don't even really know, like I've played with some like really great players, but I haven't really actually played with like any other, like any pros. And I haven't like, yeah, like I, you know, I've played with, like I've said, like great players, but I've never like had that moment of like seeing like a Gallagher or something where I, where I see them in person and I'm just like jaw on the floor, like can't believe it. So it's always been a little weird and like definitely felt, you know, pretty, pretty isolated. And um, yeah, I mean, like, I think in my mind back then I was like wanting to go to like Dama Fest and like the first or second MKO. And just like, in my mind, I was like, that's ridiculous. Like, I'm not gonna like, no, like, you know, to me, it seemed so wild that people would be 
like traveling for Kendama and sponsored for Kendama because to me it was like, how can they do this? No one plays it. Like, how is that even possible? So, you know, it kind of it kind of always kept Kendama a bit like on the on the back burner just because it seemed it all just seemed so unrealistic to me because it was like it's not real here, so there's no way that like can be real anywhere else. Um, but yeah, I mean, it definitely was like kind of isolating. It was nice when I first kind of got got reached out to from Falcon and then um, felt like a little bit more community then because there were other players on the team. Um, and, you know, like one of my first games of like legitimate Ken was against Chris Doe on Skype in like 2013. And that was a really sweet thing for me. I remember being like so shaky and like being in like my living room on like my yeah. parents' computer. God. Yeah. Be- before jumping in there, so uh, you mentioned it, and, and we talked. I don't. I don't actually think I mentioned it at all uh, leading up to this point. But you you actually received a sponsorship before your now sponsor Tarek Anama, uh with Fulken. Uh, you were just saying, uh, talk to me about that real quick. Like, how did that happen? Who is Fulken? What, <laughs> what was yeah. that? I, so I bet ba- you most of the people listening don't know what Fulken is. Yeah. So Fulken was this um, brand from Taiwan, and they were. Um, a small crew. They kind of still have remnants in like the Super Friendies Kendama crew. I think it's Super Friendies. They just had that recent collab with Chrom, actually, that like green Kendama with like the little like character. Um, oh, really? That's that's what's yeah. Fulken? That's, that's like, like the, their new thing. Guy. It's like they're kind of, they always had it. It was like kind of like a Kendama crew and then Falcon was like a, the company. But oh, cool. I didn't know yeah. that. That's, that's yeah. super cool. Jiazu Chen, who was running Falcon. It's like a part of that Kendama crew. So that was after the Terra two-year competition, I believe. Um, I think I just got a Facebook message from this guy being like, hey, we see you playing Kendama. We're starting a Kendama company. Like, would you like to be a part of it? And back then, you know, Falcon was just, I think they, they, they contacted me like a year, not even, maybe like seven or eight months before I even got one of their Kendamas. And it was Lee Ho Chung or Chung Lee Ho. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but he was the other player on that team. And then it was it was me and him, and that was probably like fall of twenty thirteen ish, maybe maybe earlier than that. And and so yeah, they just contacted me. I was like, whoa, a Kanama sponsorship! Like, sign me up, absolutely. And then you know, yeah, Logan. They had the those are the ones they had the rubber bands around the middle of the Tama, like you might remember yeah. from old MKO Dama that happened. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. I I have one of yeah. those somewhere in my room. I don't know where, but I have it. <laughs> MKO did the collab for that Dama, or like Sweets did that collab with Yumu, and Yumu kind of like absorbed Falcon, or they were kind of like a brother company almost. Brother oh. I don't really know the full relationship there, but like there was some relationship. Um, but yeah, and then so I was on that team, and then slowly more people got added. Like Christo got a- added, who's like an OG, I think, Sacramento player. Um, Aldrin esque or Essek who actually, like, he's still, he's still super involved. He still slays. He filmed Adrian Esteban's um, pro edit. Um, and Alex Ramos was in there. A couple other guys. A guy from Poland was in there. Um, a couple other people who don't play anymore. But, um, so, yeah, it was pretty cool. Like, they sent me some damas. They actually sent me, like, I, I remember buying a huge box of damas, like, at wholesale price and then selling them around Ottawa. Um, mm. And their damas were, like, I mean, there were like 2013 Kadamas there, like right, right. one strings that would fray, and you know the rubber band around the Tama was kind of weird, and and all that. So that sponsorship pr- probably it lasted until like the spring or summer of 2014, um, and then at that point, I kind of like I wasn't playing way too much. Filming kind of became a bit of like a chore rather than something I love to do. Um, so at that point, I kind of I kind of stepped back and I was like, I think I was like going to work at summer camp that summer. And I was like, not going to be in a position to film. I wasn't really progressing. And I was like, Hey, I think I'm going to like step away from the sponsorship, which is too bad because like they were really sweet and they were really great to me. And I was definitely just like some little grommy kid who just like wanted more kendamas and stuff. And they were like always really nice. It's what we all want. Um, yeah. we're, and I remember we're really yeah. easy to please people in the community. <laughs> yeah. Send us a free Damo. Real. We're going to be happy. Yeah. And man, I, that was like one thing that was actually kind of huge for me was because t- that was like KWC 2014. Um, and I remember like Chris Doe went and Lee Ho went and the Falcon guys asked me if I was going to come. And I was like, 
you're asking me if I'm going to come to KWC? Like, no, I'm like 13. I probably have like $8 total. Like, I'm not going to be able to come to Japan. <laughs> it was it was cool for me to see Chris Doe. I think he got, one of them got 14th at KWC. And me seeing someone on my team getting 14th at KWC, I was like, whoa, like, maybe I am like pretty good at Kendama. Because like still to that day, you know, I had no videos but i just kind of thought that everyone was like way better than me so yeah and your videos were insane too like i i look back at them recently and i think you did like a no hole bird over valley or something like that and like a bunch of other like whack weird tricks that like people today wouldn't even be able to hit on modern kendamas that you were hitting on like old non-sticky TK-16s with your brother, <laughs> not knowing what was right and wrong to do with Konami. You were just having fun and doing stuff. And think, <laughs> like tricks that shouldn't have been hit back then, you know, like stuff that like <laughs> innovated stuff. It is yeah. really cool edits. Uh, there's a couple of them linked in the blog too. So if people can't find them on Vimeo, I think there's like two of them that are on the blog post as well. So go, go re check those videos out. They're insane. Thanks, man. Yeah, I remember doing like Lighthouse in my Terra 2 edit. I did Lighthouse, Lighthouse 2 tap back to Lighthouse. And I remember at the time that was just like, to me, it was like insane. Like it was mm -hmm. so insane. I love that trick. Yeah, absolutely. <gasps> okay, so, so you left the Falcon team and then mm -hmm. it was what? You, you were with them for a year? <laughs> yeah, about a year. About a year. Probably so left. you'd be what, 14 at this point in your life? You know, yeah. you had a sponsorship at 13 years old, which is crazy. That's like Gallagher age when they when I, yeah. <laughs> were, were about then. Maybe, maybe no, it would have been later than that. I was probably like 14, maybe okay. 15. Okay, 14, there. 15, thereabouts. Uh, yeah. And then since then, you left the team. And what happened? Was your brother still playing with you? Or were you just fully alone at that point? So by this time, it was like a lot also because my brother went off to university at this point. And, you know, my brother, even if he wasn't, like, playing with me way too much, he was really into, like, videography. And he'd always <clears throat> be down to film. And he'd always be down to edit the videos, which was always sweet. So it was always, like, a full kind of... Even if he wasn't necessarily, necessarily playing, it was kind of like a full event. And we'd hang out and film and edit and stuff. So that was always really fun. So losing that was kind of like... I was like, okay, well, I'm not really filming edits on my own. I, like, filmed, like, one edit on my own. And it was, like, fun. It was, like, my... Falcon Pro announcement edit, but <clears throat> it was kind of just wasn't really the same, I guess. And yeah, I don't know. I guess I was just like in high school, like doing other stuff. Like, still, yeah, what just, did you do? What did yeah. you do in high school that wasn't Kendama? I don't know. I had a girlfriend for a bit. That was pretty chill. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> that was pretty chill. We watched we watched Colin Sander edit yeah. number seven a seven, lot. Seven a lot. No, I don't know. Like, I was a big I was a big band guy in high school. Um, I played music. I did like a lot of music in high school, which is too bad that I that I'm not really doing any, anything anymore. But I guess that ate up a lot of my time. And I don't know. It was just kind of I was still playing it. Like I I still had kendamas around, and I'd still pick them up here and there. But I just like wasn't really I wasn't really trying to progress. I wasn't really like pushing myself. I feel like I kind of just had like stayed like stagnant at the same tricks for a few years that I just kind of like every so often toss out. So definitely that. And then I mean like also I was you know in high school kind of going to university too in the next few years so it was just like busy times in the year and busy times in my life i mean and you know without like a community around me it just like can damage kind of slip through the cracks for a while i right. always like had them around probably but yeah you know i wasn't buying any new kendamas i was playing uzoras until 2018 so crazy crazy so come 2018 so you're in ontario did you have to do the like Okay, Ontario is, like, weird compared to the rest of Canada when it comes to school. It's like you do 13 years of school, which is, like... The no, we don't, year. man. We used to. We don't do it anymore. That, that's not a thing anymore? Okay, just... so... <laughs> but don't you have, like, that, like, uh, middle ground between, like, college where you do, like, what is it called? CPA or what? That, that's, that's, that's Quebec has Sage. Oh, that's... Ah, uh, that's Quebec. Yeah. Quebec has Sage. So that they have that one year, of, like, in between high school and university or college or whatever. Ah, see, I'm that uneducated West Coaster who, who lives in Alberta and Sask, and we just still believe Ontario's like 12 years behind everybody else. <laughs> yeah, really. You guys are gonna a driver's license at like 14 and driving tractors around. <laughs> hey, look at you go. Um, okay, so so you you ended up going to college in in Halifax uh, at Dalhousie. Yeah. Did you go there mm -hmm. right after high school? And is that where Kendama started to re-enter into your life? 
so yeah, I went there. Yeah, it was in 2015. I guess I started going to I started going to Dal. Um, and no, Kendama didn't enter my life until until like 2018. It didn't come back. I mean, I, like I said, like I still had doms around. It's not like I never. It's not like I fully stopped. Yeah. But it didn't really re-enter my life until 2018. And I mean, I can go into that story if you want. I guess. Yeah, yeah, do it, do it. I that's that's what I want to know is like what brought you back out yeah. of the grave? Like, because because here's the story that I'm seeing playing out. Right, I'm seeing this this kid, 13 years old, pick up Kendama, achieving this like legendary status of getting sponsored. He's still never been to an actual live event or anything like that. But you were so good. Uh, that this company out of Taiwan reaches out to you and they're like, yo, Holmes, join our team. This kid's getting shared on Ken Garden forums and, and whatnot with his brother and those edits and they're fired. And then all of a sudden he's just kind of drop off the face of the Kanama earth. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden now in the past, what, two years, three years, That's you've been on this fun. like fast trajectory to being a very well-known, well-respected player. Uh, but so many people okay. I think would just assume that you only started maybe two or three years ago, but you had this whole like former Kendama life yeah. uh, and there's this gap space. So what brought you back? That's what I want to know. So for, before I say this, just because I saw one of my homies in the chat here, there's actually a hilarious story where I think in like 20, like 17 or something, there was one night at university where I think I was just like getting chirped for my Kendamas or something. And I remember I was just like, it was after a night out and I was just like pretty hag. And I was just like, I'm washed up, man. I'm a washed up Kendama player. I'll never be great again. And I was just like going off and like half joking, but like half serious. Just like <laughs> so haggard. Just like, I remember my, my roommates making fun of me so much the next day for it. But um, so I definitely kind of had that mentality where I feel like I wanted to get back into it. But I just like, I just thought I was too far gone. You know, I just I like kind of watched stuff progress. And I remember like, yeah, like, I remember when I kind of lost interest, not lost interest, but when I stopped, it was like, you know, juggles were becoming big. I was kind of salty because I, could, I couldn't really juggle and everyone was juggling. <laughs> yeah. I remember, like, Bond putting out that video of him just doing, like, jug spike 10 times in a row and just being like, it's not luck. Like, I can actually do this. Mm. Um, but anyways, fast forward to 2018. What brought me back into it is another actually pretty fun story because I was, that was when I was doing an exchange and living in Munich in Germany. And when I was there, like, I had a lot of downtime um, and, you know, a lot of just, like, hanging out in, like, parks and chilling. And so I had my old Terra painted Uzora and I brought it out there with me and I started seshing it again. <clears throat> and Mark Wibbles, who runs Kendama Europe, is based out of Munich. So I hit him up and was like, yo, like, I'm a Kendama player, like, <clears throat> you know, wondering if there's anything going on around here, like, would be sweet. And then he was like, yeah, there's like this, there was some big Red Bull skate event one weekend. And he's like, yeah, we're going to have a booth, like come by, like come jam. And I remember being like so nervous and being like, oh my God, like I'm going to meet Kendama players. Like this is going to be crazy. And so I yeah. went to that event and it was like the Coffee Brothers, shout out those guys. They're sweet. Um, and like Mark Wibbles and a couple other players. And they just had a Kendama Europe booth and they were just all jamming, jamming Dama. And I was there with my little Uzora in like 2018 with my like three pictures. <laughs> <laughs> just like, but it was sweet. Like, I loved it, man. I was doing like little, you know, I was doing like juggle the lighthouse or just like little Ken flips and stuff. And I think like, even to them, I think I was like still like, you know, pretty good. And it was just wild playing with people. And like, it was so sweet. And I was like so jittery, but then like, you know, kind of got used to it. And I was just like hyped. It's like that feeling that people say when they go to like their first NIKO or something. Mm blown away by like all these Kanama players and all this stuff and I was just like saw like four people playing and I was like no way this is wild like this is insane so and then they gave me a Kandama Europe one of the record Kandamas yeah it's actually such a sweet Kandama man I don't really see many people playing them but they're dope but um yeah had, like five six finger strings sticky paint big cups and man I, it, I was just like so instantly like so hooked like so back into it and i remember like trick i remember tricks coming back i remember like getting back into it doing border balance again doing like border flip again which was like so sweet i remember being able to just like toss triple lunar flips on this like there were nothing which was like crazy to me and i like soon after i remember getting like my first triple stilts flip and all this stuff and i was just like so hooked back into it mm. <clears throat> and then wow. yeah that just and then going from there, I like, you know, going back to Canada, going to Halifax, meeting Keegan and kind of just took off.
Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. That, and, and that's like, man, I feel like that's what brings so many people out of the Kendama grave. Like I'm, I've seen that so much this year in particular with so many of these older players that, you know, had quit for a bunch of years. And then all of a sudden they see this like local little buzzing community in their local area. And they're like, whoa, people are playing. I'm going to go hang out with them. But like just yeah. once, just, just one time I'm going to come out. And then, and then next thing you know, they're like posting tricks again. They're, they're back up on the gram. They're competing in NAKO For sure. and SKO or Battle at the Border. You name it. It's so cool. So many, so many people getting back into it. It's crazy seeing it. It's so cool. Okay, let's take a, a couple minute break here. Let's answer a couple questions from the chat. And then we'll, we'll sure. jump back into more of the modern story. Uh, meeting Keegan and, and your journey to Terra. And then we'll, we'll kind of close it up there. Uh, man, there's so much I want to dive into here. I think your story in particular is so unique and different from so many others that we've we've had on the show because of your your hiatus or your gap or your your long isolated journey. I really yeah. hope that people pick up the pun that I put in there because you know Canada frozen ton. Anyways, um, I shouldn't have to explain it. Just get yeah. it. <laughs> Okay, um, question here from Patreon, longtime listener of the show, uh, great supporter, love this guy a lot, Brett Walters, Boston W on Instagram. Homie, homie. Dude, the homie, great video editor. Guys, go check him out, go follow him. Uh, he wants to know, what is the dream trick you are currently chasing right now? Ooh, what a question. I've had a dream trick. <clears throat> I'm not currently chasing it, but I've been kind of, chasing it on and off for a long time is um, the one that, what's his name? Nathan Pendel did. And it's like, a, it's like inward lunar around the clock. So you do like inward lunar flip, tray, um, barrel, backflip laser, backflip, yeah. backflip tray, barrel. Oh my gosh. Laser. So, so I remember I like in the summer, I was going for that one a lot. And then I just stopped because it's such a grind. But otherwise, I really... Oh, I, I do want to get triple border flip. Triple border flip's been on my mind a lot lately. I've been I don't even to... want to think about either I've of those tricks. Grind, man, I don't want to grind triple border flip, but I just want to have triple border flip lace. So those are probably my two biggest ones right now. Also, like, like penguin fast hand spike, lake goon jug penguin fast hand spike. I wanted that one for 28, but didn't lace it, which is too bad, but. So yeah, those 28 ones. will get you like that. 20 will get you like that, man. Jeez. The clock, absolutely. Oh, th those are sick tricks. I love that around the clock trick. I remember seeing that, and I was like, there's no way anyone Dude. is that consistent to do that. That's so sick. What a wild trick. I want that trick. trick so bad. Yeah. If you get that, I'll lose my mind. So sick. Okay, a uh, question here from Drew Laces. He says, yes, finally, fire emoji. <laughs> he's, he's excited for this one. He says, I have so many questions, but I have one in particular. If Max couldn't play Kanama anymore, what would he do? That's a tough one. I don't know. Be a, be a geologist? Be a, yeah, I guess, you know, do my career that I was supposed to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I guess I'd, if I wasn't playing Kandama, I mean, like, yeah, I guess I'd be probably over in Germany in school. Um, I would, like, hope that I would be into another skill toy, like... I tried getting into yo-yo, but it just, like, wasn't intuitive to me, like, Kendama. Like, Kendama kind of makes sense to me. Like, you get cups, you get spike, you get, you know, you can see it. But yo-yo is, like, yeah, anyways. But um, I don't know, man. I, like, climb a decent amount, but I've, that's been mm. put on happiness kind of from the pandemic. Dude, that was one of my goals for this year, but all of the gyms are shut down in Calgary right now. I wanted to get a bouldering yeah. pass and, and try and go bouldering once a week, build up those yeah. those core muscles. I just see so for many sure. climbers in the Kanama community, and I'm like, man, that looks so fun and so sick. Dude, it is fun. It's it's tough right now. And even if they, like, they're open here in Vancouver, but even then, it's like, with social distancing and everything, they're just, like, so expensive. And, like, yeah. you, you can only, like, slot, like, a couple hours. Anyways, but, yeah, so that's tough. But I don't I don't know, man. Maybe I would be, like... Maybe my geology career would have really taken off if it wasn't working down. <laughs> Just maxing his rocks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was, like, a lot of stuff that I was, like, hoping to do geology-wise that kind of got put on hold. Like, I was applying to do an internship in Saudi Arabia and this kind of stuff that kind of ended up just getting put on, put on hold because I wanted to play ball in a cup. But, um, no, in terms of, like, other hobbies, tough to say. I'm getting into biking recently. Maybe I'd, maybe I'd be biking a lot more. 
Yeah, downhill, like mountain biking, or uh, actually, I did try that in the fall, and I want to get into it. I thought I'd be way too okay. scared, but it was no. So you fun. and I, we're, we're gonna go. I love it. I love True, it so yeah. much. Big it's into summer, it. Yeah. Big, Big into time. it. All right, uh, D Pats. Dylan wants to know, longtime listener of the show. Uh, D Pats underscore forty eight says, my question is, if Max had any outside inspiration on his play, or if your style is completely created by yourself. Hmm. So, I mean, I kind of touched on this a bit. Like, definitely yeah, a little Tio, bit. DYC. Misu is one that I didn't mention. Mm. Misu yeah, is... Yeah, because you... Gosh, yeah, you're she's big. just incredible. Yo, she's... No. Everyone who's listened to this show more than, like, two or three episodes knows I love I love yeah. Misu. Her play style is one of my yeah. favorites. But, but, yeah, you emulate that a lot. You love, like, the lean houses and the techie balances and stuff like that. And that's all Misu. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, I mean, she's great. Like, Chris June, I see, is in the chat here. Chris June has been inspiring my play recently. Like, a lot of those a lot of those pressure things, I've been, like, I haven't really posted anything with them, but I've been trying to get into them. I love yeah. June. I love that uh, little trick he just put on uh, on his gram recently. The like, uh, what was it? Lunar flip up, pressure yeah. flip to inward lunar. I just so figured that one out the other day. That's such a fun trick. So cool, man. Yeah, that's been sweet to get to know June a little bit more. He's a really sweet guy. I honestly like. I knew him from like years of Kendama, but like I had never obviously really talked to him. So he's been sweet coming onto the Terra team. Super welcoming. Super sweet guy. Um, otherwise, I mean, like in like early days. Um, Definitely people like Colin Sander, obviously. Matt Ballard was doing really cool stuff. Keith Matsumura with just, like, the yeah. huge flips. Steph Lucier, actually, like, the other, you know, the original can Canadian woman shredder, man. She was, dude. like, killing it back in the day. She's so rad, dude, and so funny. Yeah, man. I mean, I was, I've, like, never really talked to her. I should really kind of hit her up because I'm so close to her now. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, like, Haley Bischoff in those early days, too. I really like Zach Yord. Turner Thorne. I don't know why I'm forgetting Turner Thorne. Turner Thorne was, like, that was the so first many. pro mat I got. Um, yeah, so many inspirations. Like, definitely take a lot. I find that I find that I am really, really big on taking just, like, bits and pieces. Like, I kind of, like, Frankenstein tricks together, in my opinion. I don't know if that's, like, something that kind of comes across. But I find that there's rarely, like, a full line that I really vibe with that I see. But there's always, like, one little move that I'm like, hmm. Like, how could I do mm -hmm. that? Yeah, so, you pull, pull that one little thing out. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. and like something that I've kind of been that's been big in my in my own play in like recent play, I guess, is I've been trying to just like fit in tech where I can. Like stuff like I had an I had an old trick that I did. I did like cush tap back, and then I did an orbit, and then I did like cush orbit tap back. So just like stuff where you can like fit in any tech where you can in like the smallest places has been kind of interesting to me. Like people always talk about like connecting dots, but this is like yeah. kind of pretentious. But I've been it, kind of like, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, like what you were saying at the beginning of the episode, like Tio, uh, he, there's like no wasted movements. There's no gap yeah. space in his tricks. It's, it's yeah. always like, there's always something technically yeah. happening. Mm -hmm, for sure. And like, I mean, this is going to sound like kind of pretentious, like I said, but like rather than like, connecting dots i feel like i kind of want to like add more dots in just like mm. cram as much cram as many movements as you can but i it's funny because i say that but i always add like a juggle to spike like I'm, <laughs> i never can flip in like I'm, I'm i'm the softest enders always which is so funny so i say this like i don't know i think that's what i want to believe but at the end of the day like i'm not gonna go i'm not I don't know. Doing a crazy under. Dude, you should. You, you're gonna come out to Calgary one day and hang out with Jared Porter for a day with with me, oh, and you're gonna watch him. And he's gonna hit like a crazy drink. And he's like, "This is the first time I've ever hit this. How should I end it?" He'll ask you, and like, it's like I don't know, like do like a flip in. He's like, "No, nah, I'm gonna do triple tap, uh, insta double eight can finish or something dumb like that." And it's like, homie, you just said you've never hit this <laughs> trick before. Just pin it. Just do it. Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 that's too soft. I gotta, I gotta do something hard. <laughs> Dude, I wish I could do that. I wish I had that mentality, but I'm just so soft with that. People sometimes tell me, they're like, oh, yo, like, best player in Canada, like, all this stuff. And I'm like, man, I'm absolutely not the best player in Canada. Like, absolutely I'm not. Like, Jared Porter. There's so many other, like, Alberta homies that are, like, not big out there that are, like, so good. Like, the can Canadian shredders are just humble. They don't post tricks and people don't know real. Them. But you, you definitely are one of the best players in Canada. I will say that hands down. Thank I you. Think, I think you are very much up there. Uh, if not, and some may make that argument the best, yeah. but 
Who knows? I need to play Jared Porter, man. I want yeah, to play Yeah, you got to play Jared Porter. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, let's hit like two or three more. Let's save a couple for the end. Um, I want to save a question here from uh, Kanama Cares, really good one in here. But let's let's hit two or three more really quick, and then let's jump into the modern story. And we'll, we'll try and keep this one under two hours. Uh, Fish Dama asks, can you ask Max, what was the biggest motivation during your early years of playing Kendama to level up being an isolated player? And this is along the same lines as a couple other questions here from Antonio uh, Micho. Uh, and, and then we'll hit one more question here. So uh, what were the things that motivated you in being uh, the player you are today, especially during isolation when you were alone? Mm. How did you keep going? Mm. So definitely, like I said, like, I just wanted to be really good. Like, I, I wanted to kind of, you know, notice me, senpai. Like, I wanted to be, you know, I kind of wanted to be known. Like, I'm not really competitive with, like, almost anything else. But Kendama is the one thing that, like, I want to be really good at. And also, man, like, I know that Antonio, I saw that he asked this. And, like, it's hard to give tips for people that are isolated. I feel like I was in, like, a bit of a unique case. Because, like I said, there weren't that many players. So, I kind of really felt like I could do something. But also just, like, just like play when you want to play when it's fun because if you try to make yourself play when you're not having fun like you're not going to be landing stuff it's going to yeah. make you dislike it more you're not going to be thinking of cool new tricks like the only way yeah. to really progress is to for me at least is to like play when you enjoy it because if you play if you're forcing yourself to practice then like your heart's not going to be in it you're not going to be lacing yeah. like you're not going to be thinking creatively it was funny when i talked to to talk to show enough chris and you talked to him about this too Oh, he said yeah. that sometimes before he plays, he'll listen to comedy to kind of get himself in like a bit of like a giddy and like playful mood. And I thought that that was so interesting. And I was like, I mean, I don't think that it would necessarily work for me, but like getting in that headspace of just like, fe like feeling it, like Kendama is like in so many ways, like a meditation, like a form of meditation and like kind of escape from other things. But at the same mm -hmm. time, like definitely just play my best Kendama when I'm like happy and chilling. <laughs> Yeah, that that one with uh, Shown of Chris is honestly one of my favorite episodes. There is some really good content in there in Dude. terms of of like things that people can take mentally and apply to their play style and to their game For real. And, and really level themselves up. Uh, we we riffed on a book that I think honestly like I don't think people need to read the book, but at least understand the concepts of uh, by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. He's a Hungarian uh, psychologist and the book's called flow the art of or no the psychology of optimal experience and basically it's like finding that flow state where you're not bored and you're not pushing yourself too much but right in that perfect space where you are just playing and time mm. seems to pass and, and yeah. you've, you've been doing it for hours and you're just you're just hitting that perfect amount of challenge and fun where you're just growing and if you can find that you're you're on a fast track to getting good so yeah, man, for real, man, he, that's sweet. He's like, Chris is so like methodical and his like whole philosophy and like kind of mantra behind Kendama mm -hmm. and pill work is so cool. Yeah, let's, uh, let me check a couple questions in here real quick. Uh, let's hit these real fast, quick answers. Uh, yeah, sorry. Marty Dot Lives wants to know, uh, favorite beanie brand, go. Um, I'm wearing a Fila one, which is hilarious, but I found it on the ground. Uh, so I like, I like, Fila, I guess, fits well. I know it's, well, yeah, I found it outside a bar one night and I washed it, but. Um, That's still so gross to me. <laughs> yeah, I would never take clothes off the ground <laughs> on a street. <laughs> Good on it. Uh, okay, uh, here's, here's another one. Uh, I got another one here for you from Sam Doc Kramer. <laughs> uh, favorite stall? Uh, lean House. Does that count? Yeah, sure. That counts. That absolutely counts. Another one from Sam Doc Kramer. Uh, favorite add on? Ooh, uh, probably, uh, tap, tap, toss, tap, toss, tap, toss, down spike. Okay. Or uh, trip, one, or trip J. Trip J. Trip J is a good one. Uh, peaches and cream. Max, how do I become as swag as you? Um, I don't know, man. You're already pretty swag, dude. You're already way better than I was like six years into playing Kandama. So you don't need tips. <laughs> I know. I tell him that You're all fine. the time. He's like, no, no, no. I don't feel like I'm good enough. Dude, Holmes, you just passed your one-year mark. You're too Dude, good. You got triple triple stilts flip. That took me literally eight years. So I still haven't good. hit it on, on a yeah. not. Like, I've hit it on one kendama, which is like a stall hone kendama. It's an Evo. It's like made with birch, fat metal, <laughs> fat. Yeah. I like it counts, but it doesn't count. Like it was, yeah, it was, it was designed to do that trick, and I was like, I want to hit it on something not designed for that. Okay, Widowmaker Matt underscore wants to know best way to learn goons. Um, late goons, I guess he's talking about starting. Oh, uh, so, 
Yeah, I mean, there's like two two different ways. Really good way is to start in lighthouse and toss it like a half flip forward and toss the tama back and smack it because it's just one motion, which is nice. Otherwise, if you're starting from airplane and you want to learn them, I'd say focus on tossing it over your shoulder. Like it's not an exaggeration. Toss it like more up than you're throwing it back. Um, really over the shoulder. And when you toss the airplane, toss it high. Like the higher the whole thing is, the more time you'll have in general. So just throw it high, man. I needed that tip too, because I still haven't hit one. I'm so bad at yeah. they like I, I play indoors in Canada. Like I don't like learning those tricks because yeah. I play indoors for like sixty percent of the year. And then in the summer I try to learn those tricks. And so this summer I'm gonna hit all those tricks, your cloud bounces, all that I've hit cloud bounces, but uh mm -hmm. you know, lake goons. Lake goons I have not gotten too good at yet. Yeah. We'll go for a mountain bike, we'll learn some lake goons. Yeah, yes, it's Silver Star. I'll meet you out there in uh True. In, um, Vernon. That's my favorite hill to go mountain biking on. So True. good. Okay. I was right near there where I first went. But yeah, go on, sorry. What, did you go to Big White? No, I didn't go to Big White, but I was not in the one in Vernon, the one at the other end of the lake. What is Tim it? Maybe it was Silver Star. Maybe it was Silver Star. It was like a smaller mountain, just like adjacent to Silver Star. I think. I think it was. Yeah, I, I don't know that one. Whatever. Okay, uh, last last quick question, and let's dive into the modern story here. Uh, Sam Doc Kramer sure. again wants to know uh, what's your favorite Ken shape. <sighs> Ooh, tough one. Um, yeah, I know you're 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 a sponsored <laughs> player now. You got to be careful what you say. Yeah. The new Orem shape from Tara. That's hopefully gonna some stuff coming on that soon. Is really sweet. I really like a skinnier, lighter, smaller kendama. Um, so that's really nice for me. Taps really well. Um, the GFN shape has been really cool for me. Super unique. Takes a little bit of time to get used to, but once I kind of got used to it and like really got used to the dimensions, it really slaps. Like Kush taps, which I love, and it you know it does taps and lunars, which I really like. Which like you don't often find otherwise. Grain Theory Next Dot is like an OP shape. You know, taps, Ken flips, and lighthouses on it are incredible. It's really small. It's really light. All the Kens are like under 72 or 3 grams, which I really like. 60 millimeter Tama. I have really small hands, so I like a small Tama. So, um, yeah, GTN S shape is like, if I ever have a shape, I'll like base it off of that mixed with like a little bit of GFN mixed with maybe like the Citadel dinghy. Mm. Okay. Uh, well, uh, now, I said that was the last one, but there's a couple questions in the chat that I, I just feel like I need to ask here. So Izzy Chills wants to know, what does GFN mean? It's just a way of life, man. Like, I don't really know what to say. Like, next question. <laughs> GFN. That's that's just what it means. GFN, Gandhi lives. He, he, he doesn't like the answer you gave regarding the beanie. So he, he wants to follow oh, up and true. say, what's your favorite beanie brand? Is it Fila or, or the other one? Fila is such a funny answer. No, I don't know. Uh, I have two beanies right now. And one's Fila and one's Caribou, like the beer. So uh, I had a Patagonia one that I liked, I guess. I don't really know. I don't really, I feel like I don't really know beanie brands. Fair. Hey, I, I've never gotten into the beanies too much. Uh, I have a Carhartt one uh, that was branded by my company Ooh, and I wear that one good. a little bit. It's very warm and cozy, but it yeah, doesn't fit much. under a snowboarding helmet. So I, just, I, I don't <laughs> usually wear one anyway. It's like one of those like taller ones. It doesn't work for that. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I only kind of started wearing them because my hair started getting really long. So I know, I know. I, so quick aside, I went to go get my hair cut the other day because it was just getting really gross in the back. It was, it was a little bit too long back here and I wanted to keep it growing out. And I told the kid, he's like 18 years old. He's been cutting hair for like less than a year. I'm like, hey man, uh, I don't want too much taken off. I'm trying to grow this thing out. And he's like, oh yeah, no worries, no worries. We'll just like clean it up a bit, blend it so it all grows in evenly. What is this? <laughs> it's all gone on the sides. There's nothing yeah, in wow. the back. He really had a lot to get off. Yeah, he cut off a lot. <laughs> man, oh well. Yeah, I, I don't mind. I don't like going to the barber. I've just had friends cut my hair for the past few years. I know. I should have done that, you know. Anyways, I'm disappointed, but it happened. And it'll grow back eventually. But enough about me. Let's get back into your story here. Uh, talk to me about college, meeting Keegan, and how you got to Tara. Let's, ca let's catch up to for today sure. on the journey. Yeah, okay. I'll go a little bit faster. I won't ramble as much. Um... Uh, so yeah, meeting Keegan was like sweet, it's hilarious. It's a little like basically what happened is that I had so Keegan had like a little crew that they weren't like deep into Dama, but you know they like they jammed it. Keegan like most of all, um, but one of them, um, oh, what was his name? Oh, it's slipping away from me now. But he he one of Keegan's friends went on a Tinder date 
with one of my friends and um, uh, she was at his house and saw on his mantle that he had a kendama and she was like, Oh, yo, a kendama. Like my friend has a kendama. Like, that's cool. And he's like, no way. Like, like what's his name? Like, do I know him? And she showed him my Instagram and then he showed Keegan my Instagram and then Keegan just DM'd me and was like, yo, you, you play Kendama? Like, I heard through a Tinder date that you play Kendama. Like, what's good? Yeah, Miguel. <laughs> Keegan. Classic. Man. Tinder yeah. bringing, bringing Dama Dude. players together oh, since, random since 2018. Tinder, random Tinder date. Like, ah, the guy's place just, huh, what's that? And then anyways, Keegan DM'd me. He's like, yo, you want to you you jam? And I was like, yeah, I want to jam. And then after that, we were hanging out, like, at least once a week and just jamming we had like our we had a few spots around halifax we'd always go to sometimes just go to his place for his raining but those sessions were like the best like going into the summer and just like the weather was getting really nice and keegan like we were like pushing each other and oh man it was so fun i love those sessions yeah and so that's where you began to found that renewed sense of community hey like where you started coming out of that kanama slump where you hadn't been playing <laughs> and you finally had people to play with again and that's where that journey really kicked off. And I think what you were mentioning was Keegan was the one who encouraged you to, you know, start posting again on Instagram and starting to push. And I think you probably were behind the scenes a lot on Keegan's development of building a brand and building a company, you know, Citadel. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I imagine like being in, in the background of that also probably was quite, quite exciting and encouraging for you to grow and, and play and just be a part of that journey and think about it again, and get involved. And then since then, now, now you've been quite active on Instagram, posting more than I could ever keep up with. It's insane. <laughs> uh, what? Yeah, talk to me about like the last year and a bit. What has that been like for you? I think you you've made so many friends perceptually from the outside. Myself yeah, no, being for whatever, sure. But yeah, talk to me about that. The past year. Yeah, I mean it's crazy. I mean, like you know, with Keegan, we were getting a little bit of a community going out east, and now there's like a now there's a good good amount of players in Halifax. There's like you know, like Timmy and Eric and like a lot of those homies, which is sweet to see. It's kind of too bad that I left right when it started kind of picking up. But I mean, I used to play with like Nardama, like Frank out there. Yeah. He's from Newfoundland. We um, love Frank. Love him, man. Little rascal. He's mischievous. <laughs> but uh, God, but uh, the last year, though, yeah, I mean, I kind of always had this mentality about Kandama that I remember people back in the day saying like, oh, like, you know, I don't know if I'd still be playing if it, if it wasn't for events or I don't know if I'd still be playing if it wasn't for like my friends. And I remember I always was kind of like, for real, dude, like, you don't love Kandama then. Like, if you could, if you can only play because you have friends that play, like, you just love hanging out with your friends. You don't love Kandama. Mm. Um, and then I've kind of, and I don't know, in the last year, now that I actually like talk to people like regularly and, you know, I have like little group chats or whatever and I can like bounce ideas off people and like Zoom and whatever, like, it's just a whole different world like it actually feels like a legit like in the past like i said like it just never really felt real like it never really felt like there was actually people out there that played but now that like there are and i can talk to them like it's just changed everything it's made me want to get like so much better and like you know little competitions like seeing my name in like the bracket for the sko is like crazy like seeing myself like kind of get through battle of the border just like makes me want to you know play that much more and the last year has been like, you know, such an interesting one for all of us because it's obviously like COVID and, you know, I was supposed to work like, like my life would have gone in such a different direction. I was supposed to work in like a, a field job in like the middle of nowhere in Nova Scotia last summer. That was like my original plan. Um, and then I was going to plan to do that and then maybe get another geology job or, you know, try to go to school. But then because of the pandemic, I ended up, I ended up moving home. I was working still, I was working in a lab in like a energy lab doing research on like geothermal and carbon capture and storage out in Nova Scotia. So I was doing that remotely from Ontario. And I mean, I just had time to play Kendama. That's all I had. That's all that was going on. I wasn't seeing anyone. I was at my parents like cabin in Quebec. And so, yeah, it was just like every, you know, so many people were diving back into Kendama, kind of like we talked about, like Chris Bosch and like Daniel Robinson and like, you know, like, Hanson and Dom was getting back into it and like, mm -hmm. you know, Micah and Gino even around the same time. Like, so there's just been a lot more hype around Kendama and I've just had time to just like, just play Kendama. And this summer I was probably playing Kendama anywhere from like an hour to like four or five hours a day and just mm -hmm. loving it. So yeah, the community has like added a lot and 
honestly, like in these times of like COVID when I'm not really seeing anyone, it's sweet just like having people to talk to and like, yeah. So I don't know, definitely a huge sense of community. And then, yeah, I mean, coming out here has been incredible now that it's too bad. It's still a pandemic. Like I wish I could jam with more people, but being in the shop and it's like, it's all pretty surreal. Yeah. Yeah. So you, that, that decision was a, a crazy one for you. You were planning, I remember talking with you, like what, back sometime when you were getting ready to leave Vancouver, go back home. I was like, yo, Holmes, yeah. I really want to come visit you yeah. in Vancouver. Uh, and you're like, oh, but I'm, I'm actually heading back to Ontario. I'm going to get ready and I'm heading to school in Germany to go yeah. do my master's. And I was like, oh, that's going to be so sick. You're going to get to meet all these other European players. And the next thing I know, you're moving back to Vancouver Dude. to go work for Terra. And Dude. you received the sponsorship. To, to, literally, literally, we haven't talked about this yet. Walk me through that. <laughs> yeah, true. Actually, we haven't. Um, so basically, yeah, like I, I came out here. I was, I just had like, the reason I came out here was I just had a buddy who got put up in an Airbnb for like three months from his work. And so I was just crashing on his couch. He was like, I don't want to live alone. Can you come live with me? So I just came out here and I was, you know, working remotely and just living with him. We weren't like really seeing many people. Um, but, you know, coming out here, I met the a lot of the Vancouver Domo players. Because back then, it was like the summer. People were still kind of jamming outside of it. Mm-hmm. And I met, like, Rod, and I met Smith, and I met, like, Kristen. And I met a bunch of, like, the local players around here. You know, like, Cyrus, who runs Rage Quit, sucks. And, um, and yeah, like, I just jammed with them, and it was really fun. And I honestly didn't really think way too much of it. Like, it was sweet jamming. And I was like, okay, well, see you guys. I'm going back home. Like, I thought that I was maybe going to get a job out here, but then I ended up, yeah, like planning to go to Germany. So then, and then probably like a day after I got back to Ontario, like I landed, I was chilling a day later, Alex Smith texts me and he's like, Hey, I don't really know like what you're thinking about sponsorships or anything, but like I was kind of talking to the team and like, if you're interested, you know, we could send you a box of Damas, like see what you think. And I was just like, in that moment, I was like, why did I not even really think about this? Like, you know, it was weird. I was, like, super surprised. And I was, like, first of all, sweet for, you know, tell, waiting until right when I got back. To yeah, super to- convenient <laughs> timing, eh? Yeah, I was, like, handing Come on, me Alex. a kandama. Instead of handing me a kandama, I ended up, like, having to ship a bunch, taking a few weeks. I mean, but, like, I mean, I didn't think about it either. And, like, yeah, like, like I said, like, I was super surprised. And I was, like, super hyped. But I was also, like, this kind of makes sense. Like, I'm surprised I didn't even really think about this either. Um, and then, yeah, we, we just got, a, got to talking. I got the, I, I told him, I was like, yo, like, I love Tara. I love, you know, I love the brand, love the vibe. I love the team, but I kind of want to play some of the Damas before I give you like an actual answer because, um, yeah, I just didn't really know how they played. And like, after playing for like nine, 10 years, if I was going to be on a team, I like wanted to be all in. Like, I didn't want to just like get a sponsorship for the sake of getting a sponsorship. Like, I wanted to like know that it was like a brand that I wanted to rep. They had like the mentality that I wanted to rep, like the inclusivity that you love about Kandama and all that. So I got the box of Damas, played them for like a day. And I was like, yep, like I'm in, let's go. Um, and yeah, and then I also was like, hey, man, like, I don't know if you guys need help, but I'm not really doing anything. Like, if you guys need help in the shop, like, I'll fly out, like, next week, and I'll, I'll come and help. And then Alex was like, oh, true, yeah, we could actually use some help. And then over the course of, like, he probably texted me and first asked me, like, mid-December. I got the box of Damas early January, and then I was, I moved here, at, like, near the end of January. And so pretty, pretty quick turnaround. But I was just like, I'm all in. COVID was, you know, COVID's still bad. I was like, yeah. I need to go to Germany because I was like, it'll be cool, but school will be online. I won't really be meeting way too many people. So that was, like, you know, in the end, a bit of an easy decision to be like, yeah, probably not the best time. Let's just see what's up in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Go and, you know, it's a job. At the, you know, at the very least, the very least, I got a job. So Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm living, living the dream, what I never thought I could do in full-time Kandama, which is like insane. It just took 10 years to get there, kids. <laughs> yeah, it just took 10 years. 10 years to get a job with a condom. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but but this is, seriously, you're, you're living a pretty cool life now that I think so many people in the condom community would be quite jealous of, you know, that you get to work in a shop with the condoms that you get to rep and play, and there's this humbling experience. You're going to be yeah. there. You know, if you're there for the long period, you'll be there when you get to be a part of hosting, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what is it? Oh, my gosh. Van Jam. I was like, yeah. what is it called? Van Jam, yeah. probably travel with the team a little bit. You're Dude. now close to the Washington, Seattle area. You go down yeah, and visit the Gallagher's. 
it's dude, yeah, so cool. It, yeah, it feels so cool. Like after being like completely isolated from the community, now being like sending people packages and responding to Tara's DMs and like all that, it's like being from like completely one end to like right in the middle of it. And especially because Tara is so small, you know, like Alex works so hard. Kristen works like so hard at Tara. She's like such an unsung hero. I wish more people like knew about Kristen because she, she does all the design work for Tara, a lot of the back end stuff. Um, and it's like pretty much them two and Rod. And yeah. that's like the company. And, and so it feels really sweet also to be a part of that where I feel like I can really have an impact. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, uh, I'm like, yeah, it's just like I'm like a quarter of the company just there hanging out. And, you know, like at first I was like, you know, I don't want to like step on anyone's toes. Like, I don't really know if you like want input on like designs or anything. And they're just like, yeah, man, like any ideas you have, any new ideas that you have that you think you might like, just let us know. Like, we're always looking. I'm like, so I felt very at home. Um, let's take Fortnite. Let's go. Um, felt very at home. And yeah, I've, I've been loving it. That's super cool. So what, what exactly is your role at Terra? Like, what do you, what do you do mm -hmm. there? So I do shipping, I do, I package all the shipments and then one of us runs them over uh, and ships them. I, Alex and I kind of tag team this, the Instagram I've been kind of, it's been moving over like more towards me running the Instagram. So that's like doing a lot of like the posting and just like stories and stuff. And yeah, you, you started your own Instagram live podcast. You yeah, want to come into dude, my space, man? Absolutely. Try to absolutely me? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We might even, you know, start doing some Twitch streaming because oh, yeah. everyone's been on that boat. So I might, you know, I might do like a learn to learn to hand turn with Max Twitch stream, which would be hilarious. Oh, that could be so uh, fun. Um, yeah. So like a lot of that, just like kind of coming out with new content and a lot of customer service, just replying to DMs, you know, helping people get stoked on their dhammas. A lot of that I still kind of have to leave to Alex because, you know, when it gets to like really nitty gritty questions about specific woods and what they can do. Um, you know, he's the one that handles it, but I'm, I'm getting better. And like, I'm learning a lot of like the pricing for all the, all the hand turned custom stuff, like every wood and every size mm -hmm. has different price and different laminates, but you know, I'm starting to learn it. So yeah, a lot of just like communications, social media content. That's cool. What was the most, like, I don't know. What was the, the most unexpected learning that you you've incurred since, since being there? Like, what was the thing that you were, you were most surprised by in starting working there? Uh, that's a good question. I think that, I mean, I always knew that the big OG Kanama companies like worked together a lot, but I don't think I even knew the extent, like after being here and, and, you know, like digging through old Terra Kanamas, being like, oh yeah, that was like our old like collab with like Chrome or like all this old stuff. Like the amount of business that they've all actually done together was pretty surprising. Like, I think I always, like I said, like I always kind of knew it, but you know, like I'd be like working together with like factories and, um, you know, like shape designs, like, you know, like Alex has helped Kusa with like, you know, some shape designs and stuff. And so I think a lot of that, like back end stuff that there's been so much more collaboration than even I thought. And I already thought that there was a lot. So yeah. that's been one thing that's been surprising. Um, also just like, yeah, no, that's about it. Alex is just crazy on the lathe. I was just going to say Alex is all just like, I see the Kandamas, but after like turning one or two, I'm like, dang, like Alex is crazy on the lathe. But. Do you, do you enjoy the turning process? Do you see that as being something that you want to do more of? Yeah, it's super fun. I want to do more like not even just Kandamas. I want to try to make a bowl, but um, it's, mm. it's really cool. It's like, you kind of get lost in it. You just like throw on some music and then all of a sudden you've been like standing in front of the lathe for four hours and it's super satisfying. Just like watching the, the wood just like fly off and, also, it's cool. Like you can just do such such small tweaks, and I think it's like a really cool way of like coming up with a shape. Um, mm. So yeah, I love so, it. Really so fun. are we gonna see a Max Domas soon? Like a Max turned <laughs> category? You know how Rod has his category yeah. of Domas that he turns. Yeah. But, and, and, and can I be can I be the first customer of a, of a Max <laughs> Domas? I'm honestly, dude. Like I've, in these first, like for the first while, like I think I'm just gonna be like trying to make dom make a lot of Domas. And so I'm not going to be playing all of them. So I'm definitely like, if people want them, like I'll just like send them out to people. I feel like I just kind of want to hook the homies up. Yeah, man. But, uh, you know, not guaranteed to be playable, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm hoping to get some, I can actually show you if you want, I'll show you the first one that I made. The first one was like, yeah. obviously had a lot, a lot of help from Alex, but yeah, yeah. give it, give us a little sneak peek. Sorry for anyone okay. listening after you don't really get, uh, you don't well, really they, get they can always. 
they can always tune yeah. into the IG live, but make sure you hit that follow and subscribe on the pod- podcast yeah. platforms. Uh, it really helps the show. We're trying to trying to break in into the charts in Canada and in the U.S. Yeah, yeah I'll get this light on it. So that's the first one that I turned. It has like a yeah, really... <laughs> that looks like a legit Kendama. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, it actually wasn't bad. I mean, Alex helped me out with like inside the cups a lot, but it actually isn't too bad. It's pretty good. The base cup is kind of hilarious. I was kind of going for like that, like Sioux Lab, like fatty one. Yeah, chonky, chonky for sure. But yeah, the cups are all right. It's really sharp. Dude, cool that that looks pretty playable to me. Dude, I mean, it. She she loons. She loons for sure. What are you talking about? That's a great though. That looks so good. <laughs> when are you gonna put out your your first Dalma first edit? Uh... Oh, yo, that's a good idea actually. I didn't even show think it. about that. Show you. Good... There you go. Inspo. Let's go. For real. I don't know, man. Gotta, I'll have to get on that. The, you got to put me in the credits for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so cool, man. Dude, I am so excited for you in general. Like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I talk about you probably more than I talk about a lot of other players. Oh, uh, awesome. Partly because, you know, Canadian. We got to put on for each other up here. Yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Secondly, I think your journey is really substantial. I'm very different from others. Uh, thirdly, you're getting to live this really cool life that so many people in the Kanama community kind of dream of. Uh, fourthly, you've really chosen to put Kanama first in so many ways. Like, I think the decision that you made to not do your master's right away, to go work for a Kanama shop in Vancouver, to pick up your life and just go do it, that's actually like mind melting to me that you would choose to do that. Uh, when you're like, you're a smart guy, like you're, you're <laughs> going to go do your master's in geology or whatever it was called yeah, or and like energy and like trying to do like a thesis and like carbon capture and storage or geothermal yeah. stuff yeah like that yeah. that's that's nerd stuff right that's like that's like <laughs> dude you, you're gonna get hired by a big company get paid a lot of money to tell them about rocks that's <laughs> sick and, <laughs> and you've chosen out of your own free will to say like yeah. no that can go and hold for a bit because i really freaking love ball in a cup so much yeah i, th- I think that like kind of touching on that i think that after so many years of just kind of being like yeah yeah yeah, it's just ball in a cup like yeah yeah, yeah i like it i play it but like yeah whatever i think after for so long of it being like kind of back burner i kind of just like was like you know what i actually have been doing this every day for 10 years maybe i should actually do this you know like yeah I you've been like, building up your kendama career for 10 years longer than yeah. you've been building up your geology career come on man yeah exactly i spent more time with kendama than with anything so like it kind of definitely got yeah kind of got to that point where i was like you know what i do this thing every single day like why wouldn't i try to do it full time yeah so thank you though yeah. man like means a lot it's definitely been really cool and definitely super surreal super privileged that i could even take this opportunity super lucky um yeah are your parents proud of you yeah my yeah definitely they think it's hilarious my grandma <laughs> definitely isn't i mean well she is she is but she's like hmm not gonna do a master's, huh, Max? Hmm, okay, sure. But uh, yeah, my parents are proud of me for sure. I think that uh, they want me to do the master's eventually, but I think they're kind of hyped that I can at least for like the meantime come out here mm. and chill. Do they see Kanama as a potential career for you? Do they, are, can they see that as a picture? Uh, no, like I think that maybe as like a like an interim thing and like something that I'll always like be a part of my life, but. I don't think they necessarily see it as like a full-time career. And like, I don't even know if I see it as like a full-time career. I think that'd be really cool, but it'd be tough, man. It'd be tough to make Kendama like a lifelong career. You know, I think, I think in four, three to four years, it will be very feasible for a lot of people. I think on the growth trajectory that Kendama's on, like, I I think it would be realistic potentially for me to say, like, if I keep this podcast going and keep it growing at the rate that it's been growing at, and we, we still have this great dedicated listener base, like there, there's a world and a reality in which like this could even become a, a small income to supplement, you know, working yeah. and I could drop, you know, who knows? I think that there's going to be this world, this marketplace of a lot of people that are going to be able to make a career in this game that we love uh, if you're putting in the work now. And, mm-hmm. and you are, uh, I believe I am. I think there's so many people yeah, that man, are, and we're just, so we're just much. holding out for it. We're waiting for that day where we're able to do that, right? Yeah, for sure. I, I think it's yeah. I think it's possible, man. I think we're hey, heading into the next. Step. You do it, then I feel like you're going to be the one to capitalize on it for sure. <laughs> I I think there's going to be a lot of people, right? I I think I think we're in a really cool phase of Kendama right now, where we're about to hit another stage of evolution, 
where it mm. starts to get picked up a little bit more mainline and it becomes a little bit more popular where, you know, people are going to be able to host workshops and stuff. And like, I don't know, like charge people to come and learn or whatever. It's like, not, not that everything needs to be monetized, but I think that there's going to be a substantial playground for people to participate in. That's more than mm -hmm. just posting tricks. Yeah, man. I mean, I'd love to see, it. I mean, there's always been kind of stuff like that with like an NEKO, like, doing some of those like workshops that I don't even know if they were paid for. I forget. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I'm maybe. Not sure. but like, you know, buying tickets to see fringe case or something like that. Yeah. Like it's kind of like slowly transitioning to that world of like, you know, ra like, yeah. Like you said, Dude, I, I, I want to see it. Like I want to see people being able to make, cause like if we have more people that are able to live off of Kendama and the, the income that they're able to generate off of it to be able to live their life, at least we're going to see more Kendama content. We're going to see more great yeah, work being put out. For sure. The, the problem is right now that isn't, isn't a, a huge reality. There's so many people that could be creating more, more content and more work. But unfortunately, uh, because they can't, because they need to work another job, they need to do all this other stuff to supplement, that content is being mitigated right now. And so eventually, I think that'll change. The tides will turn and we're going to see a boom, like a, a pretty mm -hmm. big boom. That, that's, my, that's my theory. I've said it now publicly. I think it's going to happen in three years, probably. Uh, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's my hope. We'll see. <laughs> For sure, man. I hope so too. That guy Schneebs in the, in the chat even said, He's like, full-time Dom is the goal for a lot of us without bringing that corporate vibe, which is definitely something true. Like, that's something that's mm -hmm. going to struggle, especially for, like, a lot of the OGs of us in the community mm -hmm. who, like, it'll be tough, you know, to keep it, to like, to scale it up with keeping the same community vibe, I think will be one of the big struggles, but... Yeah, I think so, too. I, I, th I think there's a lot of ways to do it, right? Without it having to be like, oh, yeah, we're just going to get Kendama and Walmart and it's going to become that. I don't think that's mm -hmm. necessarily the result of like kind of this picture that I see. I see it being like events. I see the indie culture growing very similar to maybe skate culture. And, you know, True. at some point it probably will evolve into maybe a more corporate version in the future. I don't think that's the next evolution. I think it'll still remain pretty indie, uh, but the competitions will be bigger. There'll be more of them. Uh, the people that are running those competitions will be able to do them more regularly. They'll actually bring in a substantial amount of money that they're able to afford to keep running them and make that part of their career. I think stuff like, you know, the Twitch streams are another way of people creating yeah. careers out of that. You know, what if there was a guy who was out there running a competition every month and he brought in, you know, an extra thousand dollars for himself because there were a hundred and some people that competed every month. That's enough money a month that he might be able to take, you know, drop his work down to 30 hours a week and put 10 hours a week into running that competition yeah. or whatever that looks like. You start thinking yeah. about it like that and it's like, okay, wait, 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 there's a possibility that this could happen. Yeah, true, I'm just actually. Saying. That makes sense. You got to start, start thinking the, the little steps here and, and we'll, we'll, we'll be well on our way. For Anyways, sure, um, Max, we'll wrap it up here real quick, but I want to know uh, from where you are today, what does the next two years of Kanama look like for you? What does the next two years of your life look like outside of Kanama? Do you want to go do your master's? What do you see for yourself? Yeah, we'll so I, re I reapplied for my master's for an October start. So depending on kind of the situation in the world, I'll, I might go do that. And, and that's something that I think that if I go do my master's, I'll, I want to keep Tara with me. Like I want to, I think it'd be really cool if I could go out there and be like a rep in Europe. You know, I could get shipments in from Tara. I could, you know, sell them around Europe if I was there. It's something that I, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the work that I used to do, like a lot of like social media and stuff like that, like I could still do from over there. So I definitely don't see, you know, like leaving Tara, but I definitely see like, you know, whether it's in the fall, maybe doing a master's then if I'm really feeling it here, maybe I'll just stay here and like postpone it even more. But, Next few years is tough to say, man. Definitely a lot of Kendama will be involved, but I don't know. Like, in terms of my own kind of goals with Kendama, um, I mean, I just want to get better. Like, I just always want to get better. I want to do cool tricks. That's what I always want to do. But I think that, you know, we've had, like, a lot of – I think that with, like, the growth of the community and, you know, with just, like, social media and stuff, there's been, like, some conflict in the community for sure. So just like trying to be a positive presence. That's what I really want to, you know, I really want to be a positive presence. One thing that I know, like I was like thinking about for a while is that we really don't have that many girl players in Canada, but we're starting to see more. Like we have like Steph Lucier, Izzy who's in Alberta, who's kind of just starting out. You know, we have Alexis in Ontario. Wait, who, who in Alberta? It's real Izzy. I think she lives like just outside of, just outside of Edmonton. Izzy, like, if Izzy you're listening to this, 
message me. Come hang out with us. Come down to Calgary and jam with us. We're going to start up jam soon again. But yeah, anyways, her, like Alexis, who's in Ontario. Um, Cassie, who just moved here from California, I think with her, with another girl that she moved here yep. with. Who's There's a Ray- red. The Rachel near Vancouver, Rachel Eichema. Yeah, dude, exactly. Rachel Eichema. Um, and, you know, Whirly Rhea, like last week was like, yeah, I have family in Mississauga. Like, I want to come up to Canada. I was like, no way. So I think seeing a lot more like girls, just seeing a lot more like diversity in the Canadian play, it's definitely like a bit of a boys club. So it'd be sweet to, you know, just see more shredders of fucking all walks of life. Sorry, see more shredders of all walks of life. Um, and just see the like Canadian community grow for sure would be yeah. really cool. You know, it'd be cool if they were like, well, we have like the brew battle, which is a big comp. If we could have like a big comp out east, like I know that Bray, Bray, you're in Toronto, man. Like, do some events. Bray, 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 and I have been talking about bringing brew battle out to uh, Toronto as well, doing doing it twice a year, once out there, once out here. Oh, that's sick! Actually, that's really nice. So, Half birthday, and birthday. Yeah, um, exactly. Well, we might but, do it for uh, his birthday or something. We'll it's <laughs> true. But uh, so yeah, I don't know. Just like seeing more people playing, seeing just like more. There's already so much positivity, like, but I mean, there's obviously, like any community, there's always room to grow. Um, and I think that people got to keep that in mind that, like, you know, your experiences aren't everyone's experiences. And I want that, I want community, I want just Kendama to grow and grow healthily. Mm-hmm. Um, and otherwise, I thought I had one more thing to say, but yeah, I don't know, man, just more people playing Dama. I, I, I also want to help Terra grow. I think that's one of my biggest things is, like, Terra's been definitely a little bit more low key, especially with like pandemic and you know shipping and the the factory has been tough with like COVID and then with Chinese New Year just happening. So it's definitely like a yeah. little bit slow slow moving, but yeah, I really but people wanna... don't realize how much that stuff affects companies yeah. and and it's like we we guys if you guys are like one of those guys that are DMing companies being like when's the next job oh why isn't it there yet guys just chill out for a little bit. Yeah, These companies real. have been through the ringer this past year in terms of getting their shipments in, all this stuff. We've got to show some grace for our yeah, favorite brands, for support real. them, like their posts, keep engaging with them. Because the more that you engage with them, the more that they're going to keep, you know, that energy going so they can, you know, bring more content, bring more stuff back to us. For real. So show some love. Yeah. It's guys like Max behind the DMs. Come on. You yeah. got to love these guys. <laughs> yeah, man. Big time. Don't yell at, please don't yell at me over the DMs. I will cry. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, and just, yeah, man, I just want to see Terra grow. Like, Terra's been, like I said, a little bit more low-key, and, like, they kind of, you know, a lot of, the, you know, Terra's known for the hand turn stuff, but I'd love to see Terra really, like, back on top in terms of just, like, everyone totally. in the Terra. Like, I think three, and, like, yeah, man, like, with the goon mods, and, like, people love the Misu mods with the, with the GFN shape, with a lot of the new modern shapes, like, I think it's right there, and I'm just, like, excited to be able to be mm-hmm. a part of it and help out. Yeah, I've been I've been saying saying uh, off and on for the past couple of weeks. Like, you have- I think 2021 is going to be a pretty big year for Terra. I'm excited about Hopefully. it. Uh, I I uh, see a lot coming out, and, and I mean I've had a couple behind the scenes combos. I'm excited. I'm excited for what Terra's got. And when when you were announced, I was like, ah, that's an even other exciting piece here. Yeah. I remember so, talking. We were like we were like playing a game with Ken, and you were like, dude, have you ever thought about going for Terra? And it was like right after Alex had asked me. I was like, huh? Oh, oh, you know, it's good. Don't say maybe I should go for Terra. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe. I was g- giggling about that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, Max, we're going to wrap it up here real quick, but let's, yeah, let's no just worries. hit a couple questions here uh, from the chat, and then we'll wrap it up. I'll, I'll let you say some final closing words of wisdom to the Kanama world, and then, uh, and then we'll wrap it up with a, a couple of announcements for what's coming up next week on the review. So, uh, FIBA, I don't, I'm, I'm going to butcher how to pronounce this, but, uh, Maybe you know how to say it. Uh, Fibarata CKO. Yeah, T H I B A U T A R C K O wants to know. Yeah, however you say that. What do you think about the evolution of Kendama since you were an OG? Um, fellow OG from France, definitely a homie. Um, it's super interesting to see how it's progressed. I think that there was like a I don't know. This is my own like personal like kind of saltiness, which is probably like not even necessarily the truth, but there was definitely, you know, we kind of hit that boom in 2013, 2014 with like Sacramento and Hawaii. And um, I felt like there was like a bit of like a period when it, Kendama became kind of spammy and, you know, juggles were kind of huge. It was just like, Oh, I can do 10. I can do 20. I can do 30 juggles. Um, but I think that it's really interesting to see where Kendama has come to now 
because it's almost like it's kind of come full circle where it was like that really like creative, inventive, figuring out this toy. And then it kind of got to, okay, like technical honing in on like the juggles and these tricks that we know. And then especially like with fringe cases, such a turnaround, it's really kind of entered that third period of like exploration again. And especially mm -hmm. with like other skilled toy players kind of coming over like Adrian Esteban and stuff like that, like jugglers or yo-yo players kind of bringing new tech and, I, I, it's, yeah, it's it's really kind of re-entered that like creativity and yeah. exploration and yeah. can you do with this toy? Um, we're so in the excavation I, stage. Yeah, we're, we're mining deeper. We've hit a new layer and we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa! We yeah, found whoa, something whoa. here. Truly geological. But um, yeah. so yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I love where it is now, man. Like like I said, like I was definitely salty for some of like the mid twenty tens just because I was like a teenager and like whatever, I wasn't as good as everyone else. Um, but I really love where it's at now. Like technically, like just trick wise. I mean, like, like I said, community always has room to improve, but like, I love where it is. Like people are being like, you know, it's just been great, man. I like, I like where the tricks are at now. It's pretty incredible. It's cool to see. Right on. Okay, we got maybe one, two more questions here, and then we'll try and wrap it up before we hit the two-hour mark. I've yeah. never had an episode go over two hours yet, so who knows? All yeah. right, uh, Gianni Vegas asks, and I don't know if this is for me or for you. Uh, if it's for you, we got a longer conversation ahead of us. My question is, do you have a WoW addiction, a World of Warcraft addiction? Is this for me or is this for you? I don't know. I don't... I don't know, but I do not have a WoW addiction. I used to play Age of Empires 2 all the time. Uh, it must really be for me. Yeah, I guess so. Been playing uh, I definitely hit. I definitely do, Gianni. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay, awesome. let's hit one more question here, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, True. And we'll we'll end it for the week. We got. Oh, sorry, that's not the question I meant to click on. Uh, this is the the question I think is a fun one to end on. You said that you began to realize you were pretty good at Kanama when you saw your teammate hit fourteenth. Uh, sorry, my battery's getting low. Uh, when no your worries. teammate hit 14th at KWC. Uh, Naran Rajan wants to know, what tricks last line made you realize you were really good at Kanama? What was the trick that you first hit that you are like, huh, I'm pretty good at this game? That's a really, really hard question. I mean, like, back in the day, back in the day when I did that, I think I did, like, big cup, big cup, toss up to lighthouse, 1.5 flip dub tap back to lighthouse trade spike. That was like a huge wow. trick for me. That was in the Terra two year comp. That's like my ender in my Terra two year comp. That was like a huge trick for me. I feel like, I feel like also getting my first stilts, getting my first stilts was huge. Um, funny story. I guess, you know, that's too long. I'm sorry. I won't tell it, but um, yeah. So stilts was really, it's really a big one for me. Border balance was huge. More recently, like when I started getting back into it, I have a long from like May of 2019, I have this long spacewalk line. I do this long spacewalk, and then I do a double inward lunar tray at the end of it. Mm. And it was just like I used a nice camera. I like edited it. Like I just like added a song. And I think that when I was getting back into Kendama, that was my first trick that I was like really proud of. And still, I like still love that trick. And I think that was like a moment when I was like, okay, I'm getting back into it. Like, hell yeah, let's go. Right on, right on. You've had some fire tricks, even winning some trick contests throughout yeah, the year. Yeah, what a trick on it. Yeah, yes, crazy yes. stuff. Well, Max, uh, thank you for jumping on the review. Thanks for sharing a cup of coffee with me, chatting through dude, some of your yeah, story. Dude. Love it, dude. dude love to know that. It's been a good time. For those of you that are tuning in late or listening to this afterwards, make sure you head over to kanamamax.angel. Give this guy a follow. You are not going to regret it. Some great content over there. Uh, show him some love on his edit that was uh, dropped on the YouTubes, True. I believe. Uh, his mm -hmm. pro and or his yeah. flow announce Terra announce whatever it's called yeah. your announcement edit for Terra Kandama. Uh and if you're DMing Terra Kandama, say hey Max uh, <laughs> and and remember that it's humans that run these companies treat them with some love and respect because they are lovely mm -hmm. and respectful back to you uh, thank you Max for jumping on here man you are doing some Thanks crazy stuff really I'm excited about it uh, for those of you tuning in and listening now a little heads up next week we have one of the Gallagher's Mr. Zach Gallagher jumping on the review to share some of his journey. You know, That'll if you've be been tight. listening to the Dominards, uh, Nick Gallagher was on the Dominards, but we're bringing Zach 
to the review to chat through his story and get a different side of the Gallagher narrative uh, to talk through that. So make sure you tune in next week. Stay tuned for the post and get your questions ready. If you're a Patreon, drop those on the Patreon or in the Q&A through the Close Friends story, and we will make sure you guys always get those priority questions for $5 a month. You also get all the behind the scenes access, the stats and all that details behind the review. Share some fun stuff over there. Uh, and we will be putting up the post soon. So we will see you next week. And Max, do you have any last words of wisdom you'd like to share with the community? Play when it's fun, man. Just play when it's fun. Then you'll, you'll get better if you play when it's fun. Dude, play when it's fun. You heard it here. Max, thank you for being here. And we will see Thanks you guys. Next week. Peace.